next to Coles and Vincennes. Back once again here at the Bicknell McDonald's, talking with head coach Josh Chambers and some of the North Knox Warriors again. Uh, Coach, this is the first week we really haven't had a lot of people here, but there's a reason. One, being homecoming preparations, and two, being a volleyball game up the hill tonight. Yeah, uh, kids uh, go and support our volleyball girls in the home game, so that's a good thing always. So, once again, it's going on this evening, North Knox girls, by the way, playing Lagoni up at uh, North Knox High School, about four miles distant from here. But let's go ahead and talk about last week. Big, big win. You know, I'd say probably right now the biggest win since three years ago when you were at Vincent's Lincoln for homecoming and, and knocked off the Alice's and you went 34-20 over Boonville. <laughs> and before we get to the touchdowns, let's go ahead and take an overview of this game. You, I think, honestly, a lot of people probably wondered if you could compete against a team in a larger conference and in a bigger division. But honestly, after probably the first series, you came out and, and really – you know, imposed your will on the game. Oh, we heard a lot of chatter uh, last week. People just, I guess, lack of confidence. Uh, as a football team, uh, I got to give these guys a lot of respect because every day they came to practice, they ignored all the noise, and they just got to work. We talked all week long about what we felt like we could do to Boonville, what we felt like they were good at, and where we felt like we could attack them. And the kids executed the game plan uh, almost flawlessly. And we were able to come away with a good victory for us. But the big thing in that ball game is, was we turned them over and we were physical with them. When we talked last week about all this, we felt like if we won the turnover battle and we just beat them around, that we could outlast them. And uh, we didn't feel like we were outmanned. We didn't feel like um, they were going to be overly, shockingly better than us. Um, we just felt like we were going to go in there and grind out a win. We were going to get after them. We were going to force them into the style of football we were going to play. And I felt like we did that. We completed some really nice short passes on screens uh, and stuff for some quick yards there. Uh, forced them to keep DBs on the field and were able to shift in and out of our power sets to our pistol sets and were able to uh, efficiently move the football. Um, I do think that we left a touchdown or two on the field, but we just kept pressure on them all night. The, the quarterback, he never felt comfortable. We never let him get the Mockaby kid in the ball game as the running back. And we had somebody on him all night long. And then the big thing is, every time the quarterback carried the ball, early on in the game, he had some success. But the more we hit him and the more we got after him, the less success he had. So that's the credit to our kids. Uh, they're working hard every single day. And that ball game the other night just shows... Uh, what our guys are willing to do to uh, push out a win. Um, really, the only time in that ball game that uh, I felt like they just got a big play on us, and I think it was kind of a lucky play, was that deep pass that right. the quarterback just hurled down the field. Uh, other than that, there was just pressure on them all night long. Our kids did a good job. Uh, Brock Smith was able to get his first ever career pick, and uh, that pick was uh, – uh, in terms of consequences, was huge because they were trying to drive. They still had some time. If they could manufacture a point and get an onside kick, um, they could have got in the game. We picked that thing off, and uh, then, you know, we ended up punting to them, but we took several minutes off of the clock. Right. Uh, and it was a pretty conservative approach on our part, but we were up by 14 points. So I didn't want to go out there and throw something and make a mistake. So we grounded out. We forced him to use a timeout. They tried to sub a couple guys in. We got on the ball real quick and tried to snap it while they were subbing. They had to use their last timeout. Uh, so we knew that we had them. So we ran the play clock all the way down to nothing. Um, and, of course, punted it away. Troy had a fantastic punt to punt it out of bounds um, and had him set up deep. And then, of course, we had a chance to scoop and score on a fumble recovery. And uh, it was just a good football game. First half of that game, you know, they scored first. And uh, our kids never even panicked. We just got the ball the second time, marched down the field and scored. Uh, then we ran our gate formation, and they didn't cover the sweep, so we were able to get two. Well, that going up uh, eight to six there was huge for us because when we scored again on the next drive, that means they were two scores down, and we took that into halftime, which creates a lot of pressure, especially on a team at home during their homecoming at halftime. Uh, we kept the pressure on them all night. 
Well, let's go ahead and we'll talk about those touchdowns. North Knox was down by a six to nothing score, but then they got the touchdown would give them the lead that they would not relinquish. And that was our Hamilton decal play of the game. Down the sideline, 40 to the 30. Here goes Troy Nolan, 20, 10, 5, it. touchdown, Warrior touchdown. Troy Nolan takes that one to the end zone, 65 yards. And, Ed, there's your play-action fake. It worked to perfection. Yeah, it did. Uh, and the official could have called holding on the deep receiver. And that was Troy Nolan's touchdown to start things out, a 65-yard play-action pass play. And anybody who's heard Ed Elliott do games with me, that has been one thing that he has been calling for for about the last four or five years is running and using that play-action fake, and it worked to perfection on that touchdown, the first one, to get you on the board. <laughs> um, Football-wise, uh, last week we had, you know, with the ball game, it was a great game. Uh, kids came out and executed. Uh, we had a big night. Uh, we felt like on film uh, that Boonville had a very good inside linebacker. We felt like we could uh, get after him. Uh, Holtman Dodes had a big night, and uh, we were able to really manufacture a lot of big runs. Uh, Cole Richter carried the ball 26 or 27 times for 108, 109 yards, maybe 110. Yeah. Um, but those carries are major in terms of importance because after we have success there, uh, we're able to give uh, Dode some sweeps on the weak side, some counters, and he was able just to make them pay because they over-pursued. And then you got to give the line credit for making some ginormous holes in there. Uh, Holtman ran one of our sweeps to the left to where he attacked the edge and made a couple cutbacks, and he was gone. And all that right there was just a good uh, line push, line set the edge, and then he was able to make the right cuts. And then so that score was huge. Um, and then – to seal the game later on, you know, Holtman had his scores. Later on in the ball game, uh, we ran a little trap play down on the goal line and Cole Richter gets in. That really set that game to where it was going to put the game out of reach for them because they were just out of time. So good ball game. Um, impressive effort by the kids. Uh, they did a fantastic fantastic job of just executing what we needed to do to win well let's talk about Holtman Dodes four touchdowns and again a lot of the plays came from that wing back position off that jet sweep and you're going behind Trevor Carre and, and that pretty big line and I imagine you like to run behind Trevor quite a bit I mean you'll be in 320 and can just you know bulldoze the, the entire right side of a defense uh, yeah, uh, we like all of our guys up there. Uh, uh, we really are comfortable with our O-line and how they do things. Trevor's had a great year. Uh, Ben's had a great year. Um, every guy we've rotated in, Rudy, um, Trey, Jalen, Page, um, all those guys have done good. Jackson, again, this is a very deep group. And so uh, we're excited about what they have to offer. Uh, we really feel like uh, they match up pretty well with everybody. Uh, they do a nice job in our pistol sets with setting up play action pass. Um, it's just a good group of kids and they've done a fantastic job week in and week out doing what it takes to win. Uh, but the biggest thing with this year is how well we have played defense and the kids commitment to that. Let's go ahead. I want to talk about two plays that I thought were big that people are going to not, not really look at as big plays, but they really were. And you mentioned one of them earlier, and you didn't mention the other. The first one was when you had to punt late in the game, and and tr- you worked down the clock, and then Troy Nolan just got off a magnificent punt and really pinned them back. And I thought that was one of the two real major parts of the game. Yeah, uh, getting them pinned deep with no time left and no timeouts, uh, we were able to really cut our uh, pass rush loose and get after the quarterback. And uh, if you watch that film in progression throughout the game, uh, number 10 was starting to get to where he was tired of getting hit. You know, they ran him probably 12 to 15 times, and our goal every time he ran the ball was to hit him. You know, uh, just keep beating on him. He's a good-sized kid. He's athletic, but just to keep hitting him. And eventually he would lose faith in what they had going on, and that's what happened. We were able to hit him a bunch. Um, we caused some turnovers. And that was really the difference in the game. And I'm going to leave one more here, okay? They score a touchdown. You mentioned that Mockaby play, which my thought was it, it, it just a very well-designed play. I mean, I, I give them credit for that one. That got him back within one score. They had to come up with an onside kick. You had your hands team up there, 
And the ball was coming about 45 miles an hour. And i got to give credit to Levi Broxmith because he took a bullet to the chest and stopped that play. And I thought that was the second major play that nobody really recognized. No, he did a great job there. Uh, I thought he was a little scared when he walked out there, but he did all right. <laughs> he uh, looked like a goalie. I'm telling you, I'm a uh, former goalie no, coach, and that's what he looked like. It was a great play. Um, and, again, uh, we had our onside kick team, uh, our hands team out there, uh, the round before because we thought that they would try an onside kick because we really did they didn't score any points in the middle quarters on us and in the fourth they were able to score uh the play to Maccabee wasn't a design play the Maccabee kid stole the ball from the kid he was actually throwing to oh okay he came from all the way across the field well fool me it looked designed <laughs> yeah and you got to give the kid credit he just made a play <laughs> well let me go ahead while you're coughing and <laughs> just go ahead and wrap up 34 to 20. I want to ask you this to kind of wrap up this segment. The significance of this win. You talk about the win three years ago when they were able to tip that ball away from the Lincoln receiver and sealed the victory, you know, three years ago at Inman Field. This game here, where does that rank with that one as far as a signature win that you really needed? Uh, we were looking for a signature win this year. We felt like we let one slip away with Sullivan first game of the year. Uh, we felt like we knew we were going to beat the next two teams. So we had Boonville circled on the calendar as a game. We thought, okay, if we're going to get a signature win, this is where it's at now. So, again, you got to give our kids credit. Uh, they executed our game plan perfectly. Uh, I say this all the time as a coach, uh, especially to these guys. It's up to them to perform. Uh, I don't make any tackles. I, I don't throw any blocks. So when they're on the field, it's up to them to mentally keep their composure uh, to physically keep their composure, and it's up to them to take care of business. And I'm proud of them because that's exactly what they did. Um, it was Boonville had a nice crowd. It was uh, one of those big-time atmospheres where they had their homecoming crowd there, and our boys were able just to take care of business, and I'm proud of them. Coming back, the North Knox Warriors tomorrow night will get ready for homecoming. We are about 24 hours away from homecoming kickoff with North Knox and North Central. We'll talk with head coach Josh Chambers about that when we return after this break. You're listening to North Knox tonight live from the Bicknell McDonald's right here on 1057 The Ride and WUCR.com. Save up to 40% every day on your groceries. Amazing quality, fantastic prices, satisfaction guaranteed, or 100% money back. Fresh meat is cut in store daily, and special orders on meat are available. Now at Save a Lot, fresh boneless pork loin is one forty-nine a pound, and fresh bone-in split chicken breasts are one twenty-nine a pound. Also, green seedless grapes are one thirty-nine a pound. Gala apples are one ninety-nine for a three-pound bag, and Totina's party pizza is five for five dollars. Shop and save at your Vincent Save a Lot, where bananas are thirty-nine cents a pound every day. Have a shoulder or knee bothering you? Hurting when you exercise or participate in sports? Painful when you're on the job or working around the house? Many shoulder and knee problems are treated with simple rehab. But when surgery is necessary, Dr. Terry Fenwick provides the latest outpatient arthroscopic techniques to reduce pain and recovery time so you can return to your work and activities faster. Don't let shoulder or knee pain get you down any longer. See Dr. Fenwick, a leader in sports medicine. Get answers, get results, get Quest Orthopedics on Willow Street in Vincennes. This is Ross Martin at First Vincennes Savings Bank inviting you to visit our new ATM at 3rd and Vigo Streets in Vincennes. Our new ATM is yet another example of how First Vincennes Savings Bank is actively working for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. First Vincennes Savings Bank is a real community bank, working to make our community better and your banking easier. Now with two full-service locations on Kilmore Road and North 6th Street, First Vincennes Savings Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Good call on McDonald's for lunch. Yeah, let's eat. Okay, we have the, oh yeah, for me. Can you hand me my, mmm, mmm. Yep, and here are a couple of, woot woots, to share. I love my, woohoo. Oh, sounds like Stacy went to McDonald's too. A delicious meal is in the bag at McDonald's. Grab a $2 bundle like a McDouble and small fries or a McChicken and small fries. Price and participation may vary. <laughs> Back once again. 
I think we caught the last part of the conversation. <laughs> we were talking about that, that kind of a goalie saying that's the only way I could explain it went right between the two and the four for Levi Brocksmith. And we were talking about how fast the thing was going. And he estimated it about 70 miles an hour. It's yeah. kind of like a, a, a base fastball. <laughs> yeah, he, he embellishes a little. That's all right, though. No, it was a great play. Uh, proud of him for stepping up and making a play that we needed at the time. Yeah, it really was a big play in the game as North Knox won 34-20 last week over Boonville. Before we get to North Central, I want to take a look at a couple of statistics, courtesy of our friends at maxpreps.com. And uh, Reese Hamelman right now, 22 of 36 for 354. That's about a 60% completion percentage. You don't throw the ball a whole lot, but the good thing is you've got – I hate to say I'm a game manager, but I have to. I mean, you know, Reese Hemmelman really has, as a junior, done a good job of being a game manager. Uh, Reese has done a fantastic job of running our offense. Um, he he does a lot of the read stuff pretty well. Uh, we do need to connect. We threw a deep pass the other night, even though we had a penalty. I felt like it should have been a ball we should have caught. And that's a mix of receiver and quarterback. And that's something we've got to figure out because we're going to need that as we progress. Um, he works at it hard. He works every day. Um, and he's going to continue to get better because that's the type of kid that he is. And, um, you know, we throw the ball well. We like Holtman out there running the wide receiver route. We like our tight ends. Um, we, we like all the guys we have. We just got to be sure we efficiently get them the ball and allow them to make plays. And so far this year, you know, there have been times where we haven't thrown it a bunch. But, again, against Boonville the other night, we threw the ball pretty well for some decent first down yardage. You know, quick screens, quick slants, hitches, uh, stuff that moves the chains. And that's the most important part because one of our formulas as a football team is play great defense and control the football, okay? And we shortened the game against Boonville. So they were running out of time because we were able to convert first downs and keep the clock running. We put pressure on them, and that's a big part of a winning formula for any football team. Let's look at the rushing. Of course, you you still like to run the football. I mean, you pass more than, than you have in pe- previous years, but you still like to run the football. 80, 80 rushes for Cole Richter for 540, 135 yards a game. Fultman Dodes with that great performance, uh, 12.4 average, and even Red Sharon, even with a couple of uh, – of uh, not great carries against Boonville, still averaging about 14 yards per carry. I mean, you know, so that, that's still pretty good production out of your run game. Yeah, uh, very good, and that's a, a mix of the running backs making the right cuts and reads and our linemen doing a fantastic job of moving people. One more thing, by the way. We've got a family feud. Uh, sorry about that, Steve Harvey. We've got a family feud going on here in the tackles department. As Troy Nolan is 36 and Bo has 31. Although I gotta give Bo credit, he's got six sacks to Troy's one. So, <laughs> so, so there's a little family um, feud going on. Well, uh, that, that's also a product of Bo playing D end, you know. <laughs> um, but again, uh, you gotta give them credit. They do a fantastic job both ways. Uh, Troy is a very sure tackler. Uh, Bo does a nice job playing D end and we just gotta continue to keep our guys dialed in. Here's the other thing, too, by the way, the other two leaders, Dylan Wolf with 23, Matt Remain with 22. One thing I like, though, nine players with over 15 tackles for your team. This yes, uh, and they're all front seven guys. And so that tells you that your front seven is taking care of business. Yeah. Um, and the back guys are doing great. They're doing a fantastic job in pass coverage. They're taking care of business there. Um, but when your front seven are taking care of the run game the way we have, um, I'm not sure we've given up a 100-yard rusher yet. And that is a very impressive thing. Uh, because yeah. our kids really get after it. Um, defensive line's doing a great job of keeping that uh, in inside of the tackle stuff taken care of. And, again, it's just one of those things that good football teams come out and expect to play good defense, and they're very physical, and that's what our guys are doing. Let's go ahead and, and remind you, homecoming tomorrow night with the North Knox Warriors against North Central. But you got the North Central T-Birds coming in to Warrior Stadium for homecoming, Coach Chambers. And you're talking about North Central, a team that has had some success the last few years, but not this year. They're one and three, and their one win came Saturday against Def School. Yeah, uh, North Central has lost a lot of group, uh, a big group of players they had last year from a sectional team. Um, they come in here uh, being able to uh, win a game last weekend, but we expect our boys to come out this week and be ready to play. It's our homecoming. There's a lot of stuff going on. Had the bonfire last night. 
it's a great week for kids. But uh, one of my messages this week is there is no bonfire this week. There is no homecoming without a football game. So the football game comes before all that other stuff. And so we need to continue to do what we do to push to get better, uh, to have each other's backs and take care of business um, tomorrow night. Now, last week you had, to, I think, the whole week you talked about your kids reminding them against Boonville that they could win. Is that part of your thing telling them this week that, all, you know, they, last week you said you could win, this week you have to remind them that you could lose? Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know... My mentality doesn't allow me to talk about losing a lot. Uh, we always prepare to win. That's what we do. Um, and so our kids come out, and we tell them all the things that they need to do to be successful. Um, and attitude is a big part of that. So tomorrow night with homecoming, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what North Central does, we need to bring a certain level of play that allows us to be successful. And that is the most important part. So North Central's got a couple of really nice athletes, a couple of really nice linemen. Um, they're going to play a, a 3-5-3 defense against us. And we need to be prepared to handle the pressure they're going to give us. Because every team is going to come out and try to throw a big punch early. And we need to be sure that we are ready for that and that we are able to handle all of that. And we just need to continue to build on it and be physical. Now, one thing that North Central has done the last few years, they played it very close to the vest offensively, a lot of running, a lot of power running. Are you expecting to see the same thing? No, they have a new coach, uh, Brad Hudson, who used to coach at North Knox, is the head coach up there. Uh, they're running a little wing tee stuff, and they're going to run a little bit of spread. Um, it's not the same uh, wishbone style option look they've had the last six, seven years. And so that is an adjustment. It's an adjustment for them. But what it really boils down to is us. Um, our guys need to continue to get better every snap and um, do a good job of getting ready to play football. What are you going to see on their defensive side of things? They're a three-five-three team, and they like to blitz. So uh, a three-five-three is essentially a modern combination of the five-three defense, where you can play some extra linebackers out in space. Uh, I would assume against us, it'll be a five front. It won't be that softer coverage. It'll be more of a five front because of our ability to run the football. Uh, but that being said, I think we've thrown it enough that they're going to have to play some DBs and honor the pass or they'll really get in a bind. So our goal here is just to do what is successful and, again, clean football. We've had an uptick in penalties the last game, and we need to limit that because if we're going to win a close game, penalties will play a major role in a close game. We were able to get out of Boonville even though we had more penalties. Um, we can't continue to do that. Have we seen the last of the 10 or 11 players in the box against North Knox with your ability to pass the football? No. Uh, what it does, though, the guys that are in the box, it forces you to keep a couple DBs in rather than just playing all D-line and linebackers. you got to keep a few kids that can defend the pass. So that puts us at an advantage uh, in that because we can move in and out of everything without subbing. So that's just a credit to the athletes we have. Um, really like the way they perform, happy with them. Um, I like their ability to put stress on another team. So uh, we're going to continue to build on that, and our guys are going to continue to work. And we're expecting tomorrow night to be a great game. It's our homecoming. Uh, there are going to be food trucks. It's going to be a great atmosphere. And uh, we really want our guys to enjoy it because in all reality, all this stuff aside, um, you know, football is a quick sport, and these guys need to enjoy themselves and give themselves an opportunity to compete and win. What or who <clears throat> is going to be a key tomorrow night? Uh, again, for us, I always go back to playing good, clean, fundamental football. That is going to be our recipe. Uh, we have a lot of athletes. We have a lot of ability. Uh, we need to continue to build on our football, our knowledge, and how we perform every week. 7 o'clock will be the start time tomorrow night, give or take, with homecoming ceremonies going on. Again, you can hear the game uh, right here on 105.7 of the Ride WUCR. It's Ann Elliott joins me for that broadcast tomorrow night. In the Southwest Conference, it'll be North Davies and West Vigo Park Heritage at Eastern. Also, Sullivan at South Vermilion. But, again, here's the thing. I don't know what it is, but uh, you always seem to get teams right after they play Jasper. I don't know what it is. Because uh, you got Vincent's Lincoln next week after they play Jasper. You had Boonville right after they play Jasper, and the end of the season you get Washington after they play Jasper. I don't know what that is. And, and on the other side of it, you usually Linton will play the teams after they play you. 
yeah, uh, it's just one of those things. Uh, we're looking forward to tomorrow night, and whenever Vincennes comes down the road next week, this might be the last regular season meeting yeah. between us and Vincennes ever. Yeah, be, uh, ever's a long time, but they've moved into that Evansville conference, and this is going to be hard for anything. So that's going to be a great football game, but we're focused on tomorrow night, and uh, we want our kids to come out and perform. We want to get out of there healthy with a win, and then our guys can enjoy homecoming, and um, we can get back to work next week. By the way, Boonville and Linton, uh, that'll be the Pioneers having to recover from that loss to North Knox going up to Roy Williams Field. That's not a great place to try to recover. But <laughs> but then uh, Vincent's Lincoln at home against Jasper, Mount Vernon in Washington, and Princeton at Gibson Southern. Quickly, PAC Heritage Hills in North Posey. You may see some of these guys, folks in the sectional. That's why we're looking at those. Pike Central at Forest Park, Princeton at Gibson Southern, Southridge at South Spencer at Springs Valley. At three and one, Tell City. So again, uh, any of those games really stand out? Uh, no, it's that typical PAC middle of the year grind. Um, well, like I said, we're just focused on North Central, and then when we get this game over with, we're going to turn our focus to Vincennes, and uh, again, uh, ready for the opportunity to compete. All right, seven o'clock tomorrow night as the uh, North Knox Warriors take on. The North Central T-Birds homecoming game coming up. So let's get everybody in, guys, if you want to uh, crowd around the mic, the crowd that we have anyway. So let's go ahead and do it uh, in the count of three. Are you going to do it tomorrow night? One, two, three. Yeah! Hey, we even got one back in the kitchen. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us. 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Ed Elliott joins me for the game. Homecoming. Come on out and enjoy what should be a great homecoming atmosphere with all the trimmings again tomorrow night, that will be at uh, North Knox High School. Have it for you. Pre-game show runs 645 tomorrow night right here on 105.7 of the ride. I want to thank our studio producer, the better half, Don Zimmerman, back there. Have yourself a great evening, and until next time, at 24 hours from now, thanks all for joining us. I'm Tom Lee saying so long from the Bicknell McDonald's. This has been North Knox tonight right here on 105.7 of the ride at WUZR. I just jumped in, and I shouldn't have. I told Ed to take it out of the break, and yeah. I apologize. So what I'm going to do is... Well, that won't I'm gonna, be the last time you yeah, do that. I'm going to give you, is, uh, I'm gonna give you a proper introduction here. It is, and time, yes, it is time for the Deusterberg <laughs> Frederick Funeral Home Game Plan, and a good game plan is about preparation. Help your loved ones be prepared now with a pre-need funeral plan from Deusterberg Frederick Funeral Homes, locations in Vincennes and Bicknell. Tom, I think it's important that North Knox not get overconfident. Yeah. You know, after yeah. they they had to go down there and they had doubts in their mind about whether they could beat Boonville down at their place, homecoming. It was going to be a tremendous uphill struggle. But it was, in some respects, a lot easier than most people thought. And the danger is they feel like that they could come out here tonight and just run over what would be an undermanned 1A North Central football team. You know, one thing I said last night to head coach uh, Josh Chambers, and I stick with it, and that is last week I think they had to tell the team that they could win. This week it's the reverse. they got to tell this team they could lose. Yeah, and I think they've, there's no doubt when you look at this ball game that North Knox is the prohibitive favorite. Yeah. And and I think that uh, it. But they've got to execute now. With 11 seniors, Tom, that shouldn't be a problem. But still, they've got to go out there and make it happen from the beginning. North Knox, by the way, will get the football to start things out, the starting lineup quickly. Let's go to North Knox first, make sure we get them in. Reese Hamilton, six foot 170, and a junior at quarterback. The wide receiver, Holdman Dode, six foot 140, and a sophomore. Also, Matt Urbane at a tight end. He's six foot 160 and a senior. Troy Nolan, 6'1", 190 and a senior. And uh, also wanted to mention Cole Richter, a running back, 5'7", 150 and a senior. Zach Boyles, a fullback at 5'11", 170 and a junior. The interior line, center, Trey Keller, 6'2", 240 and a senior. Jackson Stroud, a one guard, 6'2", 215 and a senior. And the other guard, Ben Burke, 5'11", 250 and a senior. The tackles. Include Ethan Hague at 6'2", 225 at a senior. And big, big Trevor Carey, he is 6'3", 310. And a senior and Josh Chambers, the head coach of the North Knox Warriors. Stand starting lineup presented by Save-A-Lot. Start saving up to 40% of your food bill. The trip to Save-A-Lot, 15th and Willow in Vincent. And it's time for the Grunman's kickoff. Get a better pair of kicks for your feet. 
Get a custom fit at Grundman's Custom Footwear, 906 North 7th and Vincennes. And now, with all the play-by-play of North Knox Warrior football, here's Tom Lee. Thank you very much, Ed Elliott. Good evening, everyone. Week 5, middle of the high school football season. Getting ready to go this evening as North Central will kick off to the North Knox Warriors. And Amanda will be doing the kickoff is Kobe Brewer. He is six foot 180, and he is a junior. We'll get to the other players on North Central as we get a chance during the game. Of course, uh, homecoming, the, diff, the time period between homecoming and uh, this game, not quite as long as we expected. They wanted to get it on time, and so They're they did it. that. Well, other than the kicker, having trouble getting the ball on the tee. Ball on the tee. Now, that doesn't bode well for your team when you can't get the ball to set up on the tee. He's still doing it right now, as a matter he of is. fact. Now, he got now it he's got it. Yeah. Warriors with one man deep, and the man deep for them will be, it looks like, uh, it's going to be a short kick. It's not going to matter. It's going to fall on it right at the 34-yard line. So it didn't really matter as the ball was no. falling on that time. By Jackson Stroud, the man back who was West was uh, for North Knox, I believe, was Cole Richter. Yeah, well, uh, North Central's smart enough as a coaching staff; they're not going to kick it deep to uh, start the game off, and uh, they want to to let their defense assert themselves. Warriors start with the ball at the 34. Now the one and three record for North Central, a little bit deceiving. Yeah. As, uh, their, their teams they go against have records of 14 and two in the first three weeks or four weeks make that. Yeah. And, that, and I think that's, that tells you that they've played some pretty good competition. They won last Saturday against Def School 21-8. So they have one day less to prepare. Here is out of the shotgun. Here is uh, Reese Hamelman for the Warriors. Hamelman hands it off up the middle. Richter Cole pushes through. He's got it to the 40. He's going to get down to the 41. Got about six on that one, second and short. Same play they always start off. Actually got seven yards on that one, second and three. Same play that they always do, just trying to get that power game established. They always start with the same play, it seems, and then run up the middle. Yeah. This time it works. Second down and three. Here's Reese. Hamelman tight setup for the Warriors. Man in motion, hold Mendoza. He's going to hand it off to Richter up the middle. Got some yardage. He's going to get the first down and more. Down the middle, 40. They're trying to catch him. One man to Geach. 30, 20. He's going to be gone. 10, 5. Touchdown. Warrior touchdown. A 58-yard run on the second play from scrimmage. And that time for Cole Richter and the Warriors on the board already. Well, I'm going to give him 59, Tom. It was right on the uh, 41-yard line. All right, so a 59-yard run. And two plays, same thing. Right up the middle, touchdown, Cole Richter. They couldn't catch him. You could see North Knox, Tom. They were uh, just in a, their typical strong formation. And North Central had six defensive. No good on the extra point. Yeah, it looked like it just kind of sprayed short and wide to the left. Yeah. So they tried to hold Mendoza on the extra point. It didn't work. But it had just like that. The North Knox Warriors up 6 nothing. Yeah, it, it sure didn't take long, Tom, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let me go ahead and take a look at the skill positions quickly for North Central. They've got Peyton Say, a quarterback, six foot 160, and a sophomore. We'll see if he starts there. Jace Norman, 5'9", 160, and a sophomore at running back. The other uh, back, it looks like. Actually, will be Gore, uh, Corbin Hughes, 5'8", 175, and a senior. The tight ends will be Jason Bonacorsi at 5'9", 140, and a junior. And Kalen Thompson at 5'6", 150, and a senior. And the tight ends will be Rowdy Pearson, 5'11", 140, and a sophomore. And also, he mentioned Bonacorsi, 5'9", 140, and a junior. So a very, very young team. Interior line will be got a chance. Anthony Crockett at center, 6'3", 325, and a sophomore with Liam Sollers, 6'2", 340, and a sophomore at a guard. Mikey Patrick, 5'11", 510 make that 205 and a senior and one guard to tackles. Hunter Boone, 5'7", 220, and a sophomore. And Gage Urett. 5'10", 250, and a junior up front for the North Central T-Birds. Their head coach is Brad Hudson. So the Warriors going to kick it away for the first time. It'll go off onto the left side. It was a good kick. It's going to go back toward the end zone. It's going to go in the end zone for a touchback. Oh, no. Oh, he did, yeah. It barely got in the end zone, but it did for a touchback, about maybe by about three inches. And Jace Norman just let it roll. And if that ball would have stopped at the one-yard line, Ed, it almost did. Boy, North Central would have been in some deep trouble. Yeah, it looked like for a while they weren't going to fall on it. I thought, oh, me. 
So we'll find out. In fact, the quarterback uh, will be Kobe Brewers. He is a six foot one eighty and a junior. So he'll be the man to start at quarterback for North Central. And they'll go with the spread formation. They will go with two wide receivers out left. Brewer hands it off up the middle. Not that time. He's going to go nowhere. Went right back to the line of scrimmage that time to Jace Norman. That tackle made really well that time, I believe, by, uh, I believe, Del Bo Nolan. So Bo Nolan, I believe, number 34. And uh, he's usually wears number 30, but I think he's in 34 this time around. It'll be second down, no gain. Actually, lost a half a yard second down. Quarterback Brewer. Kobe Brewer going to keep it himself, go up the middle. Oh, not that time either. No. He just got pounded right up the middle, and the man doing the pounding that time was Troy Nolan. Lost the yard, third and 11. Right now, Ed North Knox dominating on both sides of the ball. One thing about this North Central team, you look at a lot of sophomores. Very, very young team. Third down and 11. Well, they're definitely going to get an education tonight. So now the uh, quarterback, now this time they're rotating quarterbacks, and it is Jace Norman back there. Well, they move them around. Uh, now Bre- okay, they, now yeah. they got Brewer, yeah. Looked like Dortmund was set up. Now Brewer, third down, he's come back to throw. He's got time. Now he's going to look. He's going to get hit and go down all the way back at the 10-yard line. Yeah. And Bo Nolan on the end of that one as well, Ed. That's his seventh sack of the year. Boy, that's a that's a big loss too, Tom, for them. Yep, they're going to be really backed up. Fourth down at about seventeen. That's a seven a six yard loss on that one. And again, Ed, that's the seventh sack of the year for Bo Nolan. And Brewer will kick it away. He'll be standing on his end line. And North Knox with the man back at the fifty yard line. That'll be Holdman Dotes. Oh, High nice. snap. He's going to kick it away. Almost, Almost got uh, blocked. It actually did. It got partially blocked. No, it wasn't blocked. I think that's why. We've got a penalty, too, coming here. It is. It's uh, thrown at the goal line, so yeah, we will see. Yeah, so it's going to be. No, he's picking it up. So it It'll be at the 30-yard line. Locked. It was tipped. So they picked up the flag, and the ball goes down at the 30-yard 30 30 line, line, so the Warriors get it after, what was it, about a about a 14-yard punt. Yeah, well, he did everything he could to get it away, Tom, and it really was a pretty good punt considering yeah. The pressure he was under. Warriors on a short field now. They got it at the 31st and 10. So Reese Hamelman, a quarterback. This time he'll go in a pistol with Cole Richter about three yards behind him, about seven yards deep. Wide receiver spread formation out left and right. He's going to throw it outside. A little screen pass caught to Tom Boats. Holtman at the 20, to the 10, to the 5. End zone, he got in. Touchdown. Yeah. Warrior touchdown. Holtman Dodes on the board. One play drive for the North Knox Warriors. 9-11. Left to go in the first half of uh, the first quarter of play. Make that. That time, Ed, they got Holtman Dodes outside, and it was just green grass to the end zone. Yeah, it was a nice throw. He got, a, got it out there quickly. And Holman Dodes made one move and then just was off to the races and nobody it. could catch him. See you down the highway. That's it. Well, so, it's... Warriors up by a 12 nothing score looking for the extra point. Got to sense Holman Dodes is going to get some practice at that. That kick is kind of low, and that is good. good. Again, that kick only went, what, about maybe 11 yards <laughs> off the ground, 11, but it went through. I think 11 feet. Off the ground. 11 feet, thank you, yeah. yeah. 11 feet off the ground. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, know, that, was, uh, that crossbar is 10 feet, and that ball <laughs> is going to be having some yellow stripes, I think, by the end of the night. Yeah, it's, uh, it was not a really pretty thing to see. But it did go through. Warriors lead 13 nothing, And we're only, what, three minutes in? Less than three minutes in. Well, pretty soon we're going to have time to talk about the homecoming court. Down the way Eventually, yeah. yeah. i tell you what, though, the Warriors had have played three plays. Two of them have gone for big play touchdowns. Yeah, and North Central has had three plays, and they've gone for negative seven yards. By the way, these two touchdowns, another $40 to the champions together from your real community bank, First Vincent Savings Bank, with two locations in Vincent. Sponsor for North Knox touchdowns. Again, every touchdown, $20 to champions together from North Knox High School. Warriors got to kick it away for the second time in this one. 
That kick is going to be again on the left side. He's going to get picked up at the 20-yard line. It bumps into his own man, 25, and he'll go down after the 30, down to about the 32. So a nice run back that time by the T-Birds. Tom, and did something Tom, did something happen here? Well, Kalen Thompson brought the ball back on the return, so something we'll see. We're not, I can't hardly hear you. I don't know what's going on now. Okay, let me let me check I don't here. Know, I think something's... Uh... Well, I'll check in a second. So the Warriors will be on defense ball at the 32-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the North Central T-Birds, and it'll be Kobe Brewer at quarterback. Brewer, two backs beside him. He's going to hand it up up the middle. Got a couple of yards that time. Actually, no, he didn't. He got yeah. to the line of scrimmage and no more. That time, I'll tell you what, it was uh, Jace Norman, and it looked like he had some yardage. He got about a yard, but North Knox, I think the offensive line was moving them backwards. So second down and nine. This time a shotgun for Kobe Brewer. He got two backs beside him. Second down and nine. Brewer. Sets up. Going to hand it off on the inside. They're going to look outside. Not that time. And again, both of the Nolans were there that time. Bo Nolan and Troy Nolan. Actually, Ethan Haig on that one as well. Yeah, it just uh, looked like they had a... They're just containing it. So again... So it'll be third down. No gain on that one. Third down and nine. In the first quarter of play, 7.55 left to go in the opening quarter. 13 nothing Warriors. It'll be third down now. Out of that spread again. Here's Brewer. Back to throw. Looks, fires a little pass out. Incomplete. Tell you what, at the end of the play, Matt Urbane just gave an absolute lick to the player who made sure that the ball was separated from person, and that was uh, Jace Norman. Well, the receiver, Tom, actually dropped the ball as it's about the same time that uh, the tackle was made, and it was uh, it was pretty devastating. So one thing about the Warriors, they do tackle. They tackle well, as you'd expect with 11 seniors. And now, so they'll fourth and nine, and it'll be a punt this time for North Central. And Brewer gets a nice snap this time. Almost got that one blocked. Short kick. That's still. a short kick as well. It's going to bounce down and be picked up by the Warriors who fall on it, and they give it up. It's picked off by North Central on the fumble. Not a very smart play that time. Yeah, um, Matt Urbane, it looked like got to football. And no, then, it was looked like. No, I think actually, that was uh, Holtman Dodes. Okay. Tried to pick it up instead of and run, concentrating on the ball. He was looking ahead and uh, just didn't get it. And now gives North Central great field position. They're at the 42-yard line after that muffed punt. That's the first turnover of the game on the Warriors. So North Central will have it. First and 10 at the North Knox 42 after the fumble. Short field for the T-Birds. Here's Kobe Brewer. Brewer handoff up the middle, and it's going to be about to the 40. It may have gotten two, and that's about it. Handed off to, I believe, Gunnar Allen, the sophomore. Dylan Wolf makes the tackle. Actually, it wasn't Allen that time. It was Nathan Manning, I believe, the freshman. Yeah, this is uh, not the thing you want to do by giving them North Central momentum. I, I almost look at that as a as a turnover, Tom. It really. was. And you just uh and that's an opportunity to talk about in just a moment, uh quest turnover. Second down out of the ball to forty two, second and eight. Here's Brewer, hands off of the middle, not that time. They're gonna bring him down again. Ball brought down at the forty, so no gain to be third down and eight. So Bo Nolan got that one. Third down and eight. And Tom, it is, uh, that was turnover by Holden Dodes for the uh, Quest turnover and turnover your injury rehabilitation to Dr. Terry Fenwick at Quest Orthopedics. Get answers, get results, get Quest. So they're running in players. It looks like coming back in now will be, uh, uh, Nathan Manning, the freshman. He'll be playing in the backfield. So he comes back in third down and eight. And with that fumble, that's about the, as far as North Central has moved. Here's Brewer. Going to keep it himself. Now he pitches it outside, and it's going to be hit and brought down. He lost, lost the yard. yard. 
And that time, that was Jace Norman. They tried to get it outside, but North Knox just too quick and athletic for this ball club. Fourth down and nine, and you would think North Central will have to kick it. I, no, I don't think so. They'll probably go for it. No, they're, they're going to kick, kick. Yeah. Yeah, we're at the 40, 41-yard 40 line. Yard Chance line. to pin North Knox back. We'll, we'll see if they can do it. If North Knox doesn't handle the punt. Yep. Better than they did the last time. Well, that was just a, that was just a mistake by a sophomore, basically, that time. He tried well, to pick it up instead of getting it down. He's still a that sophomore. That kick, nice kick, but yeah, it's going to go out of bounds. It's going to go out about the 22-23. It's about a, really about a 13, yard, yeah, 12, 13 yard, yard gain kick. kick, depending on where he put it down. He will put it down at the 22, 23 yard line. So from the, at the 22, that's a 19 yard kick. So a 19-yard punt by Brewer. Warriors well, will have from it. from his the point where he kicked it. Yes. Yep, the 41. So there's a 19-yard kick that time by North Central. Warriors will have it after the turnover. Though they'll have it in their deepest positioning at the 24. Had the ball three times. They've scored twice. Reese Hamelman. Timeout. North Central. So the. North Central T-Bird's going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. We're back after this 30-second break. You're listening to North Knox Warrior Football on WUZR Bicknell. Vincent's at WUZR.com. Post frame buildings continue to pop up all over the area. And at Graver Post Buildings, they've been putting up buildings for over 40 years. Garages, pull barns, storage buildings, workshops, apartments, even indoor basketball courts, and some of the most attractive commercial buildings in the state. Every job is specific and unique to your wants and your needs. Graver Post also has packages for contractors and do-it-yourselfers. So for your next building or roofing project, call for a free quote at Graber Post, 800-264-5013. That's better. That now I can hear myself. So okay, yeah, maybe it's you. Maybe it just wasn't in good or something. I don't know. That's what we're doing anyway. We appreciate you being with us back once again at Warrior Stadium. Five twenty-seven left to go in the opening period, and Ed, this has been total domination by the Warriors right now. Uh, yeah, up until the one mistake, they they just have dominated. And that mistake was more indiscretion than a real physical yeah, error, yeah. It was a mental error. I think it was. In some ways, it was the right idea. It just wasn't executed correctly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It just, it's one of those feast or famine plays. Yeah. North Knox still didn't pay for it that time. Here's Reese Hamilton, first and 10 at the 24 yard line. Reese. And no, he's going to keep it himself. He's going to go outside 25, 30, 35. Still on his feet. He's going to go down in first down territory up about to 37. Warriors first, first down of this game. A nice run, 14 yards. Do you notice something, Ed, though, about Reese Hamelman as a junior? He's gotten a lot better at being deceptive with that play, and that's something we didn't see last year. I mean, that's the experience of a good quarterback. Warriors have it now. First and ten. Here's Reese. Hamelman in the pistol formation. He's going to hand off Richter. Seven yards back. Richter up the middle. He's got some yardage. He's going to go down. Pat near the first down marker at the 46-47. Yeah, yards. So the Warriors, if that is correct, that it is, is will get a first down. Their second one in a row. The Warriors chewing up ground now. Well, they will. So, I mean, yeah. uh, North Central, even though they've got a... 47-yard line, Warriors will have it first and 10. Here's Reese. Hamilton hands off up the middle. Going to go off to Richter. Cole, 40-yard line. Got a sideline. 30, 20. They're going to drag him out of bounds. About the 18-yard line. And a flag down yeah. late. They're yeah. going to say that they took him out with a little bit too much uh, verve, I guess you could say no, that. No, I don't think there's any question about that. It was. Yeah, they're going to mark it off from the 20. That'll be a 10 yard penalty. So they'll call that one. It'll be a 10 yard penalty. I don't know if the referee is mic'd up. We'll find out here in a second. So, in that, the ball carrier, was that Doze that time? That was uh, Cole Richter. Richter again. Yeah. So he had. Uh, from the 49 to the 20. So they've got 29 yards on that carry. And I don't think they have it mic'd up. They call a personal foul. It's a 10-yard penalty half the distance. Unnecessary roughness on yeah. North Central. So the Warriors will have it at the 10 first and goal. Well, the reason I was watching the blocker, Tom, and I, I thought uh-huh. the block was Jalen Conrad did just a tremendous job at making the block that sprung him free. Reese Hamelman going to touch it inside. Nice one to Richter. Cole into the end zone. Touchdown. Warrior touchdown. That's a little shovel pass that time, Ed, and that's Reese Hamelman's second touchdown pass of the game. Man, that's uh, pretty good, Tom. I mean, they're running the ball. 
at will. Right then, though, that was officially a pass. That was just a little shovel pass straight ahead. A little forward toss to Cole Richter, and he was able to take it to the end zone from 10 yards. So they're going to try it again with Holdman Dodes. The kick is up. This one looks higher, a lot higher, and he goes through. I think that's what we wanted to do the first couple of times that time he did. Warriors up 20 to nothing. 4.33 left to go in the opening period, Ed, and what can you say? Not much. If you're North Central, you you know how Custer felt. So the Warriors get into the red zone for the first time, and they score. So the Warriors with three first downs in that series. And uh, i tell you, they, again, we mentioned this North Central team is is not bad. I mean, when you take a look at their record, like I said, I mean, they won a three, but it played against teams that are combined 14-2. and two. But here's the one caveat to that, Ed. The teams that they lost to, they basically got blown out. And they're... They're a little bit undersized, Tom, to go against North Knox. And really. young. That's part of it. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're very and young. A lot of sophomores. experience. When you, 11 seniors, Tom, and these seniors contribute yeah. to North Knox. They're, yeah. not, they're not just out there fill a uniform. Two different uh, players back once again at the time for the T-Birds. Kevin Thompson back along with Jace Norman. Here's the kick. It's going to go on the left side again. It's going to be picked up at the 15-20. Thompson, 25, gets away from one hit. It goes out of bounds. Matt Urbain hit him about to 25. He's able to spin off that one, get about four more yards, then to the 29. That's where the T-Birds will have it first and 10. Yeah, they'll, uh, they've will they got an opportunity here. They need to get some just basic offense going. And they, well, it's hard to do because they're getting dominated on both lines. Well, they, Actually, they, put it on the 30. Yeah, North Knox, uh, their, their offensive and defensive line is just dominating this game. And North Central's... Putting forth the effort, but they, they just can't man to man. They, they just can't match up. Kobe Brewer this time with an empty backfield. They've got, uh, two wide receivers left and two right. Brewer. First and ten. Kobe pitches inside. That's going to be a whistle. I think somebody may have gone early. Yep. It's going to be a false start that time on North Central. That'll be their second penalty for 15 yards. Oh man. That's uh, when you know you're having a bad night, when things aren't going well, and then you have a penalty. They tried to do that toss play that North Knox scored on to Jace, to uh, Jace Norman, and it got blown dead due to the false start. So it'll be first and 15. And right now, North Central, I believe that if I'm right with 426 left first period, is in minus total yardage. You're right, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, the only right. play they had was that fumble that, that Colt and Doe's basically gifted. They gave it away three plays later. Again, empty backfield, two wide receivers left and right for Brewer. He's going to keep it himself, run up the middle, and get hit and brought down again, this time right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. Well, whatever North Central is throwing at him, North Knox is throwing back. Trevor Carre, big Trevor Carre, playing on that line along with Dylan Wolf. You got two guys at 310, 320 seniors and four year starters. That's an awful tough wall to go against. Think about this, Tom. It'd be like you running into this wall of the press box. Yeah, it, it, probably with about as much impact. And, and results that people yeah, have And results, seen. exactly, yeah. yeah. Third down, uh, second down, they got second at 15. He got back to the line of scrimmage. So second at 15, ball to 25. One back this time with Brewer. Kobe Brewer, going to throw it outside, a little screen pass oh, dropped. He dropped it again. That's the second drop that yeah. they had out there on a nice screen pass. This was Jaron Bonacorski off that tight end. Bonacorski make that off that tight end area. It'll be third down. Yeah, they've, they've had a... They're hearing footsteps, Ed, I think. <laughs> yeah, big footsteps. Coming off of that, that side, that cornerback and that linebacker. And the pass, uh, in defense of the receiver, the pass was really low. Yeah. I but, agree. But you look at Brewer. He's trying to get rid of the ball as quick as he can and because he's coming under a lot of pressure as well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Third down at 15. I'll have to let you know what our producer is saying to me. I think we've got a couple of seconds now. But uh, my our producer back Looks at the like station. We've got a what do we have? about the clock or something. Okay, we're going to talk about it. It's 3.09 left to go on the clock in the first quarter. My producer had said, uh, your head is hard enough that it would break the press box. She may be right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think she's tried to break it a couple of times, too, so she would know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
So 325 left to go. They're going to reset that clock. And so yeah. North Knox leading it right now 20 to nothing. And, and I'm telling you what, you, you talked about, you know, being a few arrows short. I think that's pretty much what's going on. So third down at 15. Well, they really spread formation here, Tom. Brewer back to throw again. He's going to get hit that time over the middle. It's going to be intercepted. It is picked off. Warriors get at the 30-yard line. Back to the middle. Reese Hamilton will go down at the 24. He got it at the 35-yard line, Tom, and it was up in the air. It was kind of a, a tip. There were two eligible players there for North Knox to take it away, and Reese Hamilton ended up with it. So that turnover presented by Quest Orthopedics, sir, over your injury rehabilitation. Dr. Terry Fenwick, Quest Orthopedics, get answers, get results, get Quest. Ed North Knox got a short field. Oh, yeah, that's that's an understatement. I think the short field starts at the 50-yard line. 25 right now is where the Warriors have it in. To come, in uh, no, I think it comes in now. Um, <laughs> in in uh, North Central Territory, first and dead. That's a dead in the wall. You know, Thank you very uh, much. Up the middle, Ricker, he's got oh, some room. 20-yard line, gets outside. He's got one man to beat. He's at the tw- to 10. Yeah, He'll job. go down at the 9. So first down for the Warriors there. Fourth, first, and goal. Back in the red zone again. You know, I saw former North Knox coach Sean McDowell, who still works on the North Knox coaching staff, and I think he's thinking to himself all those years he coached, he'd love to have a team like this. Well, I think in most coaches would. <laughs> Holdman Doat split way out to the right with the ball on the short side left. Here's Reese Hamelman. First and goal from the nine. Hamelman. Back to throw. Play action. Fake rolls that way. He'll look to throw. He does. He fires, and it's incomplete. Yeah, it uh, hit him between the numbers. He tried to hold on to it. He was being hit as he was yeah. trying to get the football. Nice job by North Central was, separating him and Ball. It was an excellent throw, Tom. Yeah, I, right on the money. Yeah, you couldn't ask for any better. That was a square head pattern, and Holtman Doat set up way off on that right side. They were rolling right to try to get him the ball. He squared in. Ball was there, but it was just separated. Second and goal. Oh, man. Is this set up for a good slant, Tom, to the post? Well, we'll see if they do it. Nah. Second down. Here's Reese. They're going to run it this time. Hamelman, back to the throw. Oh. Rolls, fires out. He's got room. He throws it to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Warrior touchdown. Matt Urbane gets that one right over the end zone line. Third touchdown pass of the game now for Reese Hamelman. And by the way, what you're hearing is the North Knox Warrior touchdown siren, and it went several times at Boonville last week. We could hear it. Yeah, they got to put the oil on that thing. Probably have a spare. So the Warriors have scored their fourth touchdown here in the first period. 227 left to go. They'll try for the extra point. Low snap. Kick is blocked. So the kick is blocked. So now Holden Dodes two for four on extra points, and the Warriors now lead it at 26 to nothing still in the first period. Tom, one thing I want to say, I, I heard this last week that, and I don't know if anything's transpired since, but Adam Vinatieri is having problems, yeah. You know, making extra points and and field goals, and and it seemed like they all beat up on him. But I'll tell you, it's just like any of them at any level. There are three key elements to an extra point, any place kick, and that's going to be the the snapper, the holder, and the kicker. Right. Anything go wrong in any of those sequence of those three people. And it can screw up the whole thing. So the Warriors will kick it away now for the fourth time. And Tom almost forgot I've got to do another quest turnover. Okay, the ball kicked off now back down the middle of the field, but the 8-19 yard line to the 25-30-35 and a nice run back all the way back to the 36. So good returns this time for the North Central T-Birds as Kevin, as Kalen Thompson takes that one. Yeah, Tom, and with that interception by Reese Hamelman, that is a quest turnover. And the, to, you need to turn over your injury rehabilitation to Dr. Terry Fendwick at Quest Orthopedics. Get answers, get results, get Quest. So once again, the Warriors right now up by a 26 to nothing score. We still got 220 left to go in the opening period. And, and after this game, we still got green to look at next week as Vincent Lincoln comes to town. 
So Brewer first and 10. Up at the 36, actually. He's going to hold on to it now. Pitch it outside. He's going to get hit and brought down for about a four-yard loss. I tell you what, they went outside to Jace Norman, and North Knox was right there, and they lost about four, maybe three and a half to four yards to be second down. And boy, North Knox just really swarming on that outside. Yeah, Tom, it, it's a, uh, it, it's just North Knox is just overpowering them, and I think they're doing. One of the things that that I've noticed since I've come back is that North Knox doesn't give up that outside play. They step across and the ends stay deep enough to where the runner has to turn it back inside, and usually that's lethal against this North Knox defense. That's, that's a loss of three second and 13. Wide receiver split on each side. Now here's the ball again. It's going to be hit, Fumble. and it's going to be a, no, actually it's okay. it is a forward pass. Yeah, he tried right. to scoop it forward again that time to Jace Norman, and the ball knocked down by the rushing black tide of the North Knox line, third down and 13. Yeah, I couldn't see the angle. It almost... It looked like he threw it sideways, but it was slightly forward. Yeah, he did the same thing as he did earlier, that little yeah. toss pass. He was trying to go up to Norman that time, and it didn't get there because North Knox had it absolutely red, almost intercepted, third and 13. Well, North Knox is in the backfield every time. Yeah. And the line is is just penetrating, and it makes those plays so difficult to execute. Kobe Brewer now with wide receivers, three of them out to the right. Now they're going to split them half and half to the right to the left. Jason Norman, third no down, and a whistle. Yeah, we got a flag, so a delay a game. Yep. Took too much time. So three penalties, 20 yards on, on the T-Birds. That'll move them back now to a third and 18. Man, oh, man. This year, you've got 40 seconds from when they put that ball down. Yep. So you've got to, you, you've got to be efficient. And a reminder coming up at the end of the game. Oh, by the way, you're going to throw it out now. It's going to be third down. It's going to be oh, incomplete. Almost. Nice pass. A little bit overthrown that time looking for his intended receiver. That was, uh, Rowdy Pearson, the tight end. Couldn't get it there. And so it'll be fourth down and be forced to kick it. It's a good idea. Yeah. They've had some yardage on that one, but it just came up short. And the receiver was open. So we're still waiting for our, for some real time updates. So hopefully we'll be getting that here before too much longer. Looks like that, uh, they will kick it away. High snap yeah. that time. They're going to get it away. Got a little bit of room, but still yeah. not a great kick. It's going to be taking a fair catch at the 47. So Holtman Dodes that time taking no chances. A fair catch at the, uh, the uh, North Knox 47 first and 10. Yeah, North Knox again has great field position and, uh, they're, so far they have, except for the one situation, they have executed flawlessly. So 112 left to go in the first quarter of play. Warriors lead it 26 nothing. And you wonder with, if you're North Knox, you're getting into that big of a lead, it kind of turns into a practice game, but when do you see some of the other players coming in? When do you give your offense, you know, your uh, you, first team enough, enough time? You get the first half. Here's Hamilton Reese going roll right. He's going to be chased. He's going to throw it down all wide open. 50 yard line, 45, broke a tackle there, and down goes Zach Boyles after about an eight yard gain down to the 45 of North Central. Second and two. So Zach Boyles uh, coming out of that fullback spot, they have hit him on some of those short passes, and they did it that time. By the way, a reminder, score updates coming up. They are presented, by the way, by Quest Orthopedics, where you can score a great deal with Quest Orthopedics. Actually, by Yoakum Chrysler Dodge <laughs> McDowell. We'll get it here in a second. Second down. I get the Quest. All right. Pistol formation for Reese Hamilton. Handoff Boyle. Zach up the middle. 40-yard line. He's into the clear to the 30. Did he going to go? 20. One man to beat to the 10. He'll go down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. Nice run for Zach Boyle's fifth first down for the Warriors. All the way down to the 6-yard line. So they'll go down, as you mentioned, to the 6. Warriors will have it there first and goal. So let's see if I can get this correct. It helps to look at your uh, sheet. Uh, score big with your next car purchase at Yoakum Chrysler Dodge off just off Hart Street in Vincent. I got it. All right, Reese Hamilton, first to goal at the six. That's going to be a direct snap of the middle. Boyles, touchdown. Warrior, touchdown. 
So that time had a direct snap to Zach Boyles. He fooled everyone who took it into the end zone from six yards. Well, you talked about how soon would they be getting in some of the second runners, and I think we've seen it. 5.8 seconds left to go in the first period of play. First touchdown of the year, I believe, for Zach Boyles, and now they're going to try for the extra point again with Holtman Doze. He's going to get a lot of practice, it looks like, in this game. Old by Boyles. Good snap. Kick is in the air, and it is good, I believe. Yes. But just run inside and right up right, so... Holdman Dodes with the extra point and Ed, the North Knox Warriors up 33 nothing here in the first period. Yeah, they've done just about anything they've wanted to do. And this is a game, Tom, I think in the first half you, you have to figure whether you're an opponent or not. You, whatever the, the team does, that's fair game in the first half. And I think this is an opportunity for North Knox to work on their uh, passing game. And they've done that. Reese Hamelman with three passing touchdowns so far. By the way, triple digits now in touchdowns for the Warriors. $100 so far tonight, given the champions together, presented by First Vincent Savings Bank, your real community bank with two locations in Vincent's. Uh, North Central, they're going to get another chance to get on offense, but I'm not sure that they're that uh, anxious. Ready to, to do it, yeah, yeah. to see that. Warriors going to kick it away now for the... Uh, fifth time here in the first half of play. So Troy Nolan going to kick it away. A couple of players up about the 15-yard line. Now with a short kick again. It's going to go down to the 30. Fumble picked up at the 32. And at the 35. And uh, Oh, what a hit again that time by Troy Nolan. Down about the 36-yard line. He's going to made a cottage industry out of that. Actually, it wasn't Nolan that time. Instead, it was uh, Trey Keller. Troy yeah. Nolan had one like that earlier. That time, Trey Keller got a Major, major hit. Yeah, that's just hustling to get down there and get in position and good, solid defensive tackle. That's the end of the first period of play. The Warriors totally dominating. They lead 33 nothing. We're back in one minute. You're listening to North Knox Warrior Football right here on 105.7 The Ride at WUCR.com. Farming is a tough business that requires tough equipment. That goes for your irrigation system as well, which is why an irrigation system from Ileana Irrigation, your local rain key dealer, is built to be durable and reliable. High strength steel, superior engineering, and an industry leading 10 year warranty on gearboxes. That is what a rain key irrigation system is made of. Give the irrigation professionals at Ileana Irrigation a call today to find out just how tough they really are. Rain key, more right than rain. And Ileana Irrigation, your local irrigation experts. Hey, it's John Yoakum here at Yoakum Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram to let you know that this month we have teamed up with Helping His Hands to do a canned food drive. We are offering a conventional oil change plus a free 24-point inspection for just $24.95 when you bring in five canned food items or more. We haven't left out you diesel or synthetic oil change vehicles. Bring them in with your canned foods and receive $15 off your oil change. There's no appointment necessary and help us fill this Ram truck up with canned foods for Helping His Hands. That's Yoakum Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram just off Hart Street next to Coles and Vincennes. Jace Norman Stewart, actually, correction, make that uh, Jace Norman took the ball, got about a three-yard gain. He started quickly, Ed, and that's about one of their biggest gains of the night. Yeah, it is their biggest gain. So they were in minus yardage in the first period. They got three on that one. It'll be second and seven. Kobe Brewer at quarterback, back split out left and right, going to hand it off to one of them. That's on a sweep play, and, boy, that didn't go anywhere either. He went right to the line of scrimmage and no further. I think they give him, they've given him a yard, Tom. Corbin Hughes took that one, and, yeah, they gave him a yard up to the 40. It would be third down, and I'd call it six, maybe a long six. So third down and a long six. Ball set up right at the 40-yard line. So far, a very good homecoming for the Warriors. They lead 33 to nothing, 10-45 left to go in the third, in the, uh, first half of play. Third down at six. Brewer back there again with backs beside him, both left and right. Brewer gonna hand it off that time up the middle and not much. Yeah, Got him out another about, yard yeah, and that's it. Yards. Hand it off again to Jace Norman. He didn't get much. He did get a couple of yards. It'll be fourth down at about three and you would think they're gonna kick it away this time. 10-20, left to go in the half. Warriors lead 33-0. So they will punt it. Or at least show the appearance of one anyway. Mm-hmm. So Kobe Brewer going to 
Step back and punt it from the 30. North Knox is holding and Dode standing at his own 35. Somebody oh, moved early. Yep. Man. That was uh, that was a uh, <laughs> way off ball start that time as uh, one of their gunners. Yeah, Kalen Thompson. Yeah. He's uh lived five, up to his, six seniors. lived up to his name. He was gunning a little bit yeah, way too quickly. Yeah, he was uh he was gonna run that forty yards in about two seconds. Pretty close too. Yeah. Four penalties, twenty five yards on North Central. North Knox has not been penalized yet. That was an emphasis during this week after the penalties against Boonville. Now they'll try it from five yards back. Fourth down and eight. The oh, kick almost man. blocked. Got a good one off that time, though. Going to be picked up to 35-40. Dode's got some room. 50. Down the sideline. 40. Got He's trapped in. He's going to go out of bounds about the 34-yard line. So actually made that to 33. He got hemmed in that time, Ed, but he made the most of it. Got it down to the North Central 33. Yeah, that was a, that was a nice return. And... Uh... It was pretty good coverage by North Central, but they just couldn't get there quick enough. Yep, 33-yard line is where it'll be first and 10 Warriors. So the kick from the 37, so North Knox actually gained four on that one. 33-yard line, first and 10. 9.33 left in the half. Warriors leading it now by a 33 to nothing score. Warriors have scored every time they've had the ball. Reese Hamelman this time with a full backfield with a pistol formation. Zach Boyles and Blake Long in there, both of his fullbacks behind uh, Rhett Sharon. Back to throw, fires it outside. It's going to be caught. Holden and Dodes inside. He'll go down it to 25. So picked up about uh, seven or eight on that one to be second and short. Yeah, nice quick hitter and got some good yardage out of it. So Holden and Dodes coming off of that uh, that wide out spot was able to get some yardage. Second down at three. Warriors move with a three-man backfield along with uh, Reese Hamelman. This time they're going to go to another formation with a, kind of a typical setup, this time with Red Sharon behind him in the pistol. Second down and three. Back to throw Reese. Hamelman right. Throws it downfield long. He's going to go for his man in the end zone. He's oh. caught. Touchdown. Warrior touchdown. What a catch by Matt Urbane. Oh, my goodness, Ed. That was a fantastic catch in the end zone. Man, that was a great one, Tom, right there. He was covered, and Reese Hamilton put it right on the money. Urbane able to get about a six-inch separation and brought that ball down, falling backward. What a fantastic catch. Yeah, it couldn't have been put any better. So that one was a 26-yard pass play for the Warriors. Fourth touchdown pass. By Reese Hamelman. Extra point attempt now. By Holtman Dodes, it's down. The kick is up. That one looks good, and it is. Seems like Holtman Dodes, and the more he does it, the better he gets as the game goes on. You know, that's interesting, Tom. That concept has been worked pretty good for a lot of people. The more they do it, the more success they have. Oh, thank you, Ed. I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you approve. And you're still trying to do that with your broadcast. That's probably true. By the way, it's another $20 for Champions Together from your real community bank, First Vincent Savings Bank, with two locations in Vincent. So, Ed, that's $120 on this game. Sixth touchdown for the Warriors, and we got 8.33 left to go in the first half. So the North Knox Warriors leading this one now 40 to nothing. <laughs> and as much as you, you wonder, this is the old cliche, but it's not that close. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's just been a total domination. Yeah. It's almost like, uh, you know, North Knox is just uh, outmanned. North Central in every phase. At this point, I definitely agree. Warriors are kicking away now for the sixth time. So Troy Nolan kicking it off. That one, a short one. That's going to go down about to 35. They're going to fall on about to 38. So that time, I don't know if he hit it, just kind of chunked it or what, but it went down at the 38 of North Central. They'll take it there first and 10. Eight minutes, 30 seconds left to go in the first half. And the Warriors up by a 40 to nothing score. Yeah, I, I think that's whatever that was. It, I don't know if it'll matter. So the ball at the 38 yard line, the Warriors will have it first. Actually, make that uh, North Central. T Birds will have it first and 10 right there. So very happy homecoming so far for the Warrior fans, and there are a lot of them here. Kobe Brewer. 
One Mac behind him. Brewer hands it off up the middle, and that's going to be a couple of yards, maybe two. Yeah, two Give him yards, two, yeah. yeah. That will go to uh, Jace Norman once again. So they're slowly starting to get back into positive territory, Ed, but, boy, they don't have many yards at all right now. No, as a matter of fact, they're not quite into positive territory yet. Man. I know they're inching toward it. Yes, they are. Yes, okay, they are. are they now? Okay. No, no, no. I, well, I've got them with six yards. And, okay, six yards. And of course, Brewer has a negative seven. Okay. So that's. So there's six yards of positive offense right now. Yeah. Second down at eight. That's a tough night at the office for sure. Here's Brewer. Hand off. It's going to go outside. And they're going to lose one or two of those. They get back to the line of scrimmage yeah. and no more than that. Actually, the original line of scrimmage. They lost about two or three. Third down. Handed off that time to uh, Corbin Hughes, it looked like. He is 5'9", 175, and a senior to be third down. The ball at the original line of scrimmage, third down at 10. And I tell you... They're playing a lot of sophomores and a few freshmen in here. And so basically right now it sounds like this is the kind of system where they're taking their lumps to try to dish out some later. Yeah, yeah, they're getting a lot of good varsity experience. Yeah, they are for sure. Third down, actually I give him third down at nine. So he got, got about a yard before the line. He's going to pitch it outside and he's going to get hit and brought down right just behind the line of scrimmage that time. And what yeah. a play by Ethan Hay. So it'll be fourth down. 6.50 and counting. Let's go to the first half of play. The Warriors already leading at 40 to nothing. So fourth down. Actually lost about two yards that time. Fourth down and 11. So Brewer will kick it away again. Now he's getting a lot of practice, too. Boy, isn't he, though? So is Holman Doe. It's a receiver. Oh. High snap oh, and flag yeah, down anyway. Flag. Procedure. Must yep, have been our, start. our Kalen Thompson, I think, took off again, Tom. he's He doesn't know the count. Well, he's the gunner, and I tell you what, he's got some speed, but he's just burning a little bit early. Well, I think you do look fast if you start earlier. <laughs> so it'll be fourth down to move it back. <laughs> yeah. To about the 31 yard line, it looks like. So Brewer will kick it away again. Holdman Dode standing at his own 40. So Brewer. That snap. He'll kick it away. That one's tipped. Now the Warriors flag. get that one down. The flag going to go down. That'll go to the North Knox area about the 48-yard line. We'll see what the flag's all about. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell, but it looks like it's going to be against... We'll see the flag Central. went down at the 28, yeah. and if it's a declinable thing, North Knox, I'm sure, would. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's in. Because they tipped the ball. It went out about the North Knox, uh, actually, did it go up to North Knox? Or, yeah, North Knox 49, so they basically got about a 13-yard kick. Or actually, more than that, about the 18-yard kick. We'll see what this is all about. Going to kick it again, I think. Oh, they're going to Ball take start. it. Yeah, oh, they, they accepted the penalty. Illegal yeah, I mean, procedure, I guess. Accepted uh, play. So, so most of it's going to be illegal procedure rather than a false start. North Knox will take it at the 50 yard line, right at midfield. Actually, just slightly on their side of midfield, and it with 6:07 left in the half, the Warriors trying to extend on a 40 to nothing lead. So the ball sending just on the North Knox side of the 50. Here's Reese Hamelman, Rhett Sharon back in there. I haven't seen him run yet. Wide receivers this time, two of them out to the right, one to the left. Reese going to pitch it outside Sharon. Rhett's got a 50-yard line, got yardage, 40-yard line. He's at the 30. He'll go down about to 31. So he got another first down that time, the Warriors sixth. So Rhett Sharon will take it down. They'll put it down at the... 31-yard line, so first down that time for the sophomore, and with 5.58 left to go, the Warriors back in business again. North Knox scored 10 times out of 10 against Eastern Green, and they're doing pretty much about the same thing here. Here's Sharon behind Reese Hamelman. Directing traffic and bringing across that time Troy Nolan onto the the, uh, left side. 
Hamelman hands it off. It's going to go and fumble, fumble. and Sharon gets it. He's going to pick it up, and he's still going to get a couple of yards. Down to the 26. Got five yards, and he fumbled it. Uh, he's trying to run too soon, Tom. Make your play as it comes. He got about four on that one, Ed, and that's one of the shorter gains North Knox has had. Second down at six. So second down at six for the Warriors. They'll come to the line of scrimmage. So this time it will be Red Sharon standing to the left of Reese Hamelman, about five yards behind scrimmage. Hamelman. Hands off inside, it'll be Dodes. Holtman pushes outside, down the middle of the field. He's to the five, and he gets in. He did. Touchdown. Warrior that's, touchdown. That's, uh, that's that actually Dodes? Levi Brocksmith. That's right, uh, what I thought. So it's actually Levi Brocksmith coming off of that wing back position. He was able to go in for the end zone. And a 26-yard touchdown run for the North Knox Warriors. And the North Knox Warriors now lead it 46 to nothing, pending the extra point. So the Warriors score another one with 4.49 left to go in the first half of play. Holtman Dode's going to try for the extra point. He's looked better the last couple of times. That one's a good snap. That one kicked. Didn't look real good. And it's through. That one went just again over the front crossbar. But good, good it is. And the Warriors now lead it by a 47 to nothing score. That's the only uncertain part of this game. Has been Dodes's, you know, extra point. Holman Dodes's extra point. A couple have looked real good. A couple have looked shaky, but for the most part, lately they've been getting in. He's made four of his last five. Actually, correction, he's got five of his last six extra points in this one. You know, it's interesting. Holman Dodes hasn't really carried the ball very much. He hasn't at all. Hasn't needed to. No. So the Warriors get another $20 for champions together from your real community bank. First Vincent Savings Bank with two locations in Vincent. So $140 so far tonight to champions together. And so far this year, they're getting a whole lot of money. They are. They're going to deliver it in a Brinks Brinks truck. Yeah, Yeah. I think so. Warriors going to kick it away now. Maybe we get a little better kick, you think? Selling time. That one, good kick right down the middle. Going to hit it at the 20-yard line. It's fumbled. Fumbled. 23, oh, no. and he'll pick it up to the 25, and he'll go down right there. So if it could go wrong tonight for the North Central T-Birds, it has Kalen Thompson able to get that ball and bring it back. He 26. got out to the 26. Actually, Keelan Thompson, my apologies. Yeah. Troy Nolan made the tackle. So it's a 26 with 441 left to go in the first half and a 47 to nothing lead on the board for the North Knox Warriors. Yeah, Keelan Thompson's got kind of having a very good night. He's one to work under an alias tonight, I think. It's been a tough night for all of them, I think. Kobe Brewer, they're going to try it again, though. Two wide receivers left and one right. Here's Brewer. He's going to go up the middle. He's going to get stopped that time. He's going to go outside. He's got a little bit of yardage, 30-yard line, and out of bounds with the 32. So he gained about six. So second down now and about four. Actually, more than that, give him a gain of eight, second down and two. Best run of the night for North Central, who has not had a first down in this game. 4.35 left to go in the half, and the ball... Actually, the clock stop with the ball out of bounds at the 34. It'll be second down and eight. Second down and two make that with an eight yard gain. Looking down at the end by the, by the scoreboard and seeing all those kids playing football down there. That is a really nice thing to see. Second down and two. Brewer hands off up the middle, not that time. He's going to get hit and brought down right again. Yeah, he's going to lose about uh, two, I think. And the big bad wolf was on the end of that yeah. tackle, Dylan Wolf. He yeah, lost one, one, third yeah. down and three. I tell you what, though, Dylan Wolf just hogged on him that time and brought him down right in his tracks. It was uh, going to Jace Newman. I said Newman. I meant Jace Norman. My apology, Jace Norman. <laughs> Trying to read the small print. Third down and three. Lost the arm in that one. Third down and three. You should be able to see it with your binoculars. Yeah, Brewer 
Well, I don't use them on the oh. next to me. Brewer, hand off outside, going to sweep it forward, going to get hit, and he's going to get the first down, the first yeah, one nice of the game. Job. That was uh, Jason Orman again. He got it after the 39. So the first first down of the game for North Central, and it comes with 346 left in the half. So Jalen Conrad got down with the ball out to the 39. So T-Bird's well into positive yardage now running it. First and 10. Ball nestled right near the 39-yard line. First and 10. With Brewer back there, a couple of men beside him. And he's going to keep it himself. Look like a busted play that time. He's going to get outside. He's going to get strung out, hit, and brought down. Right at the 45-yard line, he lost a lot of yardage. And that time on the end of that one was Matt Urbane, a four-yard loss. So, Kobe Brewer got hit that time. And, boy, I tell you what, he felt what it's like to have some Urbane warfare. Yeah, he didn't have much opening. So I go down at 14. As we mentioned, now North Central, a very, very young team. So they're basically kind of rebuilding the time and taking on a North Knox team that may be at its peak. Second down and 14. Brewer. This time I'm going to hand it up the middle. Not again. That, that was going to be brought down in the backfield. And getting in there that time was Big Ben Burke. Handed off that time to Corbin Hughes, and Hughes just, Ben Burke just was able to shoot his way in and make that play easily. 5'11", 250, and he looked like about a man about 75 pounds lighter getting back to that guy. Boy, he really put on a nice burst of speed. Third down now, third down about 18. So North Central got a first down, and that's since they've been going backward. Under two minutes left to go in the first half. Warriors lead 47 to nothing. Oh, we'll likely see more young players on yeah. the defensive line for North Knox in the second half. You would think clean shirts probably all around. Third down now in a long way. Third down in about 17 for Hughes. Empty backfield man in motion. He's going to get to football that time. They're going to turn around and get hit. Brought down after about a three-yard gain, and that was it that time for Kaelin Tom, Keelan Thompson. Fourth down, it'll be fourth down at about uh, 12, 13 yards. Actually, 14. So fourth down at 14, and again, North Central will kick it away. Clock running, 106 left to go in the first half. North knocks up 47 nothing. This may be the most North Knox has scored in a first half. In a long time. Yeah, I guess so. I was thinking too. I think it has been quite a while. Brewer will kick it away. For about a oh, 25 no. and a whistle. Procedure. The so right, somebody moved early. Well, the right tackle, Tom. Okay. Uh, raised up and, uh, he just, it looks like maybe North Knox, I, they call okay, offside so on the North Warriors. So, must have been offside, so they'll give them five more yards to kick again. That's Warriors' first penalty for five yards. Yeah. So they'll try it again. Holden mm. Doge standing up about his own 31. Here's Brewer standing about his own 29. High snap. He's going to get it away without much problem. Boy, he got a good kick that time. they let it bounce. Oh, it took a great bounce from the T-Birds down to the 10. Yeah. And then well, he got a hold of that one. And North Knox has pulled the block off, Tom. They're yeah. Not- they're not trying to block it like they did in the first. With the roll, Ed, that's a 50-yard punt. Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a nice punt regardless of the roll. Yeah. Tell you what, boy, you got a hold of that one. I think that's more frustration than anything out of Kobe Brewer. Right at the 10-yard line. Let's see what the Warriors do now. 24.3 left to go in the half. I want to see if they even think about just falling on the ball and going into the halftime. I think that's what they're yeah, going to do. Yeah, I think so. They're not trying to do anything. Yep. That's what they're going to do. They're just going to kneel down, it looks like, and in the first half they will. So the Warriors will go into the locker room leading this one by a 47 to nothing score over the North Central T-Birds. The first Vincent Savings Bank halftime report is coming up in two minutes. You're listening to North Knox Warrior Football right here on 105.7 The Ride and WUZR.com. 
Hey everyone, this is Randy Hamelman of Hamelman Decals. Here at Laidback Acres, located smack dab in the middle of warrior country, we're all warrior strong. Decal Bananas Grow Seeds, with their proven yield potential and unbeatable disease packages, are great teammates for all your acres. Good luck this year to all our athletes. Hamelman Decal is a proud supporter of North Knox High School and Warriors Athletics. See you at the game, Warrior fans. It's victory time. Have a shoulder or knee bothering you? Hurting when you exercise or participate in sports? Painful when you're on the job or working around the house? Many shoulder and knee problems are treated with simple rehab. But when surgery is necessary, Dr. Terry Fenwick provides the latest outpatient arthroscopic techniques to reduce pain and recovery time so you can return to your work and activities faster. Don't let shoulder or knee pain get you down any longer. See Dr. Fenwick, a leader in sports medicine. Get answers, get results, get Quest Orthopedics on Willow Street in Vincennes. Guardian Angel Home Health Care and Guardian Angel Personal Services in Bicknell is the hometown health care team you can always count on. As a local family-owned and operated health care facility, Guardian Angel takes great pride in serving you, your family, and friends. Guardian Angel Home Health Care and Guardian Angel Personal Services supports local organizations and events, businesses, schools, and youth sports. Guardian Angel Home Health Care and Guardian Angel Personal Services, where your care is their business. Have a great season, North Knox Warriors. Does your staff work on their feet all day? Do their feet hurt all day? Do they have trouble getting to the shoe store to purchase their work shoes? Well, let us come to you. Hi, this is Tracy from Grundman Shoes, 906 North 7th Street, Vincennes, and we have gone mobile. We can now bring our quality, service, and selection to you. Call us today at 1-800-726-4770 for more details on us helping you have happier, healthier employees. Grundman, your footwear specialist since 1929. Big. Pass plays for. We're back once again here at North Knox High School at Warriors Stadium. The North Knox Warriors right now lead at 47 to nothing as we are at halftime. And a reminder, you are listening to the First Vincent Savings Bank halftime report. It's presented by First Vincent Savings Bank. Now more convenient for you at two locations on 6th Street and on Kimmel Road in Vincent. The North Knox Warriors with seven touchdowns in the first half, and of North Knox's seven touchdowns, four of them were pass plays. The first first touchdown was a Cole Richter run at 59 yards, second play from scrimmage, it made it 6 nothing. extra point unsuccessful. Then, Reese Hamelman hits Holdman Dodes on a 30-yard pass play, kick was good, 13 nothing. and then Cole Richter catches a 10-yard pass for the second passing touchdown out of Reese Hamelman. Extra point good, 20 to nothing. And then Matt Urbane catches a nine yard touchdown pass. Extra point blocked, made it 26 nothing. Then the final touchdown of a five touchdown first half, Zach Boyles on a six yard run. Extra point good, 33 to nothing. And then Matt Urbane catches a touchdown pass, his second catch of the game from Reese Hamelman. That was Reese Hamelman's fourth touchdown pass. Extra point good, 40 to nothing. And then with 449 left to go in the second quarter, Levi Brocksmith with a 26 yard run to the end zone off of that, let's call it the Holtman Dodes uh, jet play off of that left tackle. Brocksmith did a dead time and scored. Extra point good, 47 to nothing. North Knox was six first downs, only one for North Central, and they lost yardage after they got it. And in the red zone, North Knox three for three. North Central has not been in the red zone. Turnovers, North Knox with one and inter- actually got one in interception and one fumble on North Knox recovered by North Central. Penalties, North Central right now with five for 30. North Knox one for five yards in this game. And about the individual statistics. All right, Tom, we have first for North Knox and Cole Richter. He's carried the ball six times for 136 yards. Holman Dodes, I don't have him for any carries. He hasn't time carried it, yep. In, uh, in, in a long time, that's the case. But as you pointed out, they didn't really need to. Zach Boyles, he carried the ball twice for 50 yards. Brett Sharon carried it twice for 23 yards. Levi Brocksmith carried once for 26 yards. Reese Hamilton carried it one time for 14 yards. And North Knox had a total of 248 rushing yards. Passing. Reese Hamelman, he ended up with, uh, one, good gracious, he was five for six. Yep. Tom, for a total of 81 yards, one of those being a touchdown that you'll talk about. Well, four, yeah, actually and, four touchdowns in that one we'll mention later. Yeah, and I think the circumstances, uh, around, we'll look now at North Central, uh, 
Jacoby or Jason Bonacorsi, he carried it once for zero yards. Jace Norman carried the ball nine times for nine yards. Corbin Hughes carried it five times for minus three yards. Keelan Thompson carried the ball twice for three yards. And Kobe Brewer carried the ball five times for three yards. And so North Central had a total of 12 yards rushing. Passing, Brewer tried five times, had one interception, but he tried five times and was not successful on any of those attempts, so they had zero passing yards. So North Knox, 329 rushing and passing yards in the first half, and North Central with 12 rushing and passing yards in the first half. So 309 to 12, is that what you said? Well, Tom, let me uh, say 329 to 12. So North Knox at 329 total yards. I'm writing this down. Okay, and while you're writing it down, we'll get pretty shortly, we'll get to the halftime uh, yep. announcements about the homecoming and then a couple of things that are associated with the homecoming that is coming up tomorrow for North Knox. So we will do that along with the Dr. Stephen Williams halftime adjustments. And we'll talk about homecoming and a whole lot more. We'll do that coming up after this one-minute break. We're back in one minute. You're listening to North Knox Warrior Football right here on 105.7 The Ride, WUZR, Bicknell, Vincennes, and WUZR.com. Looking for a way to protect your assets beyond your lifetime, as well as provide an ongoing source of income for others, such as those with special needs? The First Vincent's Savings Bank Trust Department provides a variety of trust services and can help you tailor the right one for you. Whether you're interested in a living trust or one to be executed in the future, ask one of our staff members for more details today at 812-885-9018. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hey everyone, this is Randy Hamelman of Hamelman Decal. Here at Laidback Acres, located smack dab in the middle of warrior country, we're all warrior strong. Decal Bananas Grow Seeds, with their proven yield potential and unbeatable disease packages, are great teammates for all your acres. Good luck this year to all our athletes. Hamelman Decal is a proud supporter of North Knox High School and Warriors Athletics. See you at the game, warrior fans. It's victory time. And we're about, I'd say, somewhere around 15 minutes away from getting the second half underway. The North Knox Warriors leader right now, 47 to nothing. North Central will get the ball beginning period number three. And uh, time right now, before we get to the halftime adjustments for North Knox, I want to go ahead and give you a scoreboard update. It is presented by Yoakum Chrysler Dodge. A reminder, you can score big with your next car purchase at Yoakum Chrysler Dodge in Vincent's. One score of note at Inman Field right now, Ed. Two teams you wouldn't expect to be one and three that are. Jasper and Lincoln. Jasper right now leading that game seven to six. <laughs> That's that's the typical game between Vincennes and Jasper. Throw out the records. They don't mean anything. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the competitive nature between those two schools has been prevalent as long as they've existed. So I got seven to six at Old Bible. Well, yeah, the other one, uh, Amy, uh, has best, it had best been finished with the, you know, has an arm and a sling. And you were right. That's who I was thinking of. We were talking during the break a little bit about, another producer that we had, and and one of the good ones, and that was who I was referring to. No kidding. But uh, anyway, uh, by the way, Vincent Lincoln will come in here next week for the Knox County Battle, and this could be one of the first times in history that North Knox would come into that game and be favored. I think you you look at it the same way I've, I've said for years. They may be looked at from a record standpoint and maybe points scored, but I think Lincoln, you've got to look at the size of the school, uh, the historical perspective, and I would still look at it, even though the records may not be the same, uh, would be an advantage to Lincoln. Just they play a, such a tough schedule. By the way, I wanted to mention North Knox has played three Big 8 teams this year. They play Boonville, they play Vincent's Lincoln, they play Washington, and you know what the common denominator between the three are? They all come in to play North Knox after playing Jasper. Yeah, oh. Yeah, well that didn't. Try that one. That didn't do Boonville very good. Tell you what, I mean, uh, Jasper beat him 35 nothing. North Knox 34-20, and who does Boonville got tonight to team the most teams play after they play North Knox? Linton. 
No, that yeah, that could be pretty. Linton could come up with a win there as well. So Lincoln to next Friday night. By the way, that's a seven o'clock start time here at Warrior Stadium. We'll have it for you right here on one hundred five seven the right. And then the Linton Miners come in in two weeks and. I know that's a game right now that both teams are pushing for because Linton comes in with a fully loaded team, and I think it'll be a great measuring stick for where North Knox is, not to mention they're a sectional opponent as well. Yeah, I, I think Linton, they've got a great program, and they'll probably come in here and feel like they, that it won't be that much of a game, to be honest with you. I think they don't, they don't look at North Knox as being able to, to be a worthy opponent, to be honest, and I think that's, that's a part of it that North Knox has got to overcome. By the way, Boonville is at Roy Williams Stadium tonight, so think about that. They're going up there yeah. to play at the Roy for the first time, and you and I have both gone up there and know how tough it is to play in that facility. It is tough. And, Tom, talking about tonight was the football homecoming, and there was a queen crown tonight, and the queen of the North Knox homecoming was Tori French. And uh, she is a very worthy queen, and... She had an excellent court with her. And yep. I think a couple of other things that are going on with the homecoming weekend, they had a great uh, Friday tailgate party out here outside the Warrior Stadium where they had food, a number of different tents and some food trucks that were here and looked like they had a lot of games, face painting, just yep. a lot of things going on. And I think WZR provided music yep. for that as well. Yep. And tomorrow... Saturday, uh, there's a golf scramble sponsored by the North Knox baseball team, and it's at High Point Golf Course. And the teams of four are $200, and you can register uh, before at the golf course uh, up to noon, and uh, tee time is at 1 o'clock, and that takes care of most of the rest of the day. And then tomorrow evening, there's the North Knox alumni mixer yep. at the Bruceville Rod and Gun Club. And the doors will open there at 7 p.m. on 21 and older only. And it's $10 a person. And, and a lot of opportunities there to talk to some of your classmates and a uh, chance to reminisce about old times. I want to ask you, Ed, did I hear the rumor correctly that you are going to be playing as a team of one in that golf scramble tomorrow? Well, I could do that playing against you. I would have a good chance of winning. But, yeah, probably. But playing against anyone else, it could be a disaster in the making. By the way, wanted to mention, uh, by the way, a score update presented by Yoke of Chrysler Dodge. Score big with your next car purchase at Yoke of Chrysler Dodge in Vincennes. We talked a little bit about that Jasper Lincoln game, still 7-6 in the first quarter. Other scores, Tell City 8, Springs Valley 6. And, Ed, we could see Tell City coming up. In the sectional coming up in a few weeks. Southridge, another 318 now against a possible sectional opponent. They lead South Spencer 14 to nothing. Other games, Pike Central at Forest Park tonight. In Evansville, Castle at Central. Bossy at Memorial North at Modern Day. Wrights at Harrison. Wrights one at three right now. And we mentioned Boonville and Linton. Mount Vernon at Washington. Princeton at Gibson Southern. Heritage Hills and another possible sectional opponent, North Posey, and Perry Central taking on the Tecumseh. I believe Perry Central also a possible sectional opponent. Well, Tell City, North Posey, Evansville, Modern Day, Linton, North Knox, Forest Park, Crawford County, and South Spencer are in sectional 40. So once again, a lot of those teams that North Knox could be facing, in fact, playing right now and we'll try to get some score updates as we get on through the evening a lot of these teams just started by the way at uh it's 8 12 right now eastern a lot of those games started at eight o'clock eastern so hopefully we'll get some score updates on some of these games coming up in just a little bit actually we got one already southridge over south spencer now 28 to nothing so again that is our update there and uh, right now, let's go ahead and go to the Dr. Stephen Williams Halftime Adjustment presented by Dr. Stephen Williams back in business on Seed Road 67 in Bicknell. Halftime Adjustments right now. And about the only thing I can see that North Knox has to adjust is maybe keeping a sharp focus. We saw that a little bit on Holtman Dodes in that fumble. But, boy, that's nitpicking. That's well, the only thing I, I can tell. I, I'll tell you, I, I don't think the starters, I wouldn't worry about it. I think they're focused and know what to do. I think this is a time where in this second half, there's going to be an opportunity for a number of different players to get in the ball game. 
And I think the adjustment that has to be made of those players, when they get that opportunity to step in this ball game and play on the varsity level, they have got to make sure that they do the right thing. No turnovers, no t- penalties, but that they play a game that shows they're worthy of getting the opportunity to represent the North Knox varsity team. A couple of scoreboard updates, by the way. Gibson Southern leads Princeton 6 nothing. Mount Vernon 7, Washington nothing. Boonville Linton right now scoreless in the first quarter. Modern Day 7 north and nothing at Central over Castle. By a 7 to nothing score, Jasper still up 7-6 over Vincent's Lincoln. That is our Dr. Stephen Williams halftime adjustments. A reminder, when you need your smile adjusted, Dr. Stephen Williams is back and accepting new patients. Call Dr. Williams today at 812-735-735. 2020. About six minutes left to go until we begin the third period of play, and we'll be back to get you ready for period three in one minute. You're listening to North Knox Warrior Football on Homecoming Friday, right here, 1057 The Ride and WUCR.com. Hey, it's John Yoakum here at Yoakum Crosser Dodge Jeep Ram. This month, we want you to be able to drive home in the newer pre owned vehicle that you have been looking at. Good credit, bad credit, or no credit, we have you covered with the best, finest apartment in the area. We strive for 100% approval with little or no money down to get you in a reliable vehicle for a payment that you can afford. Don't go anywhere else. Come see us today and put us to the test. That's Yoakum Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram just off Hart Street next to Coles and Vincennes. Times will continue to change, and life's pace may even increase. But Deusterberg Frederick Funeral Home and Wampler Shaw Chapel continues to serve the community since 1830 with two locations. Both funeral homes are locally owned with services to meet the needs of families of all faiths in a caring, traditional way. Deusterberg Frederick Funeral Home at 6th and Vigo Street in Vincennes and Wampler Shaw Chapel, 118 Washington in Bicknell, proud to support our area youth sports programs. Homecoming Friday night here at North Knox's Warrior Stadium. Warriors right now lead it by a 47 to nothing score. Along with Ed Elliott, I'm Tom Lee. And, and I want to talk a little bit about, we mentioned the schedule, Vincent's Lincoln and Linton coming up in week six and week seven. We're sending up now for a titanic matchup in week eight at Cougar Valley. And it looks like it'll be for the Southwest Conference title when North Knox plays what's turning out to be a very strong North Davies team. Uh, North Davies, uh, we see it. Year in and year out, they just have a way of getting the players together. And when they play North Knox, it's always really a, a tough contest. Yeah, well, the two years you were gone, Ed, North Knox dominated that series. As a matter of fact, uh, two years actually two years ago at Cougar Valley, the first year you missed, North Knox ran for over 600 yards. Yeah. And I believe Gavin Doan ran for, even Colton Foster, I forgot which, ran for... About 450. I mean, it was just, you know, it was just unbelievable. I was looking at it and every time he touched a football, it was right down the sideline for a score. I mean, it was just, I, I've never seen a game like that, but it was just, you know, North Knox had zero yards passing and they had over 600 rushing. Well, I would say North Davies is, is going to have to demonstrate that they can run the ball against North Knox and then they're going to have to show their defense that they can stop the North Knox run. And either of those two things uh, could be pretty tough depending on how the North Knox line offensive and defensive plays in that game. Well, they beat Washington last week to North Davies 27-8. to I believe that was the final score. So they were able to take care of the Hatchets. Hatchets are down, though. North Knox will see them in Week 9 here and on Senior Night. Again, it's the 11th Seniors will go ahead and walk onto the field, possibly for the final time, depending on the sectional draw. And we will have to see what happens. But again, you look at the rest of this season, you look at the two measure, you got three measuring stick games the next three weeks after that. I mean, you got Vincent's Lincoln here next week. You've got the uh, Linton Miners a week after that. And then you got a trip to Cougar Valley for North Davies. And I think those weeks six, seven, and eight are going to tell really, really how good this team is. I don't, I don't disagree with you, Tom. Usually I would, but in this case, I don't. You, oh, why not? I know I should. I know just to <laughs> find just an to, argument. I don't... Just to stay to form. But, <laughs> but I think when you look at, at Lincoln, it's, that's the, that's the test. As you say, Lincoln is kind of having a down year this year. But they always get up and are very 
you know, competitive against North Knox because of the county bragging rights. But you, you were gone that game, but I think they still have a bad taste in their mouth after what happened at homecoming three years ago when North Knox tipped a final pass to secure the victory on a last minute pass that would have won it for Lincoln and by a fingertip. The North Knox Warriors won that game and spoiled their homecoming. And I'm sure Lincoln and, you know, Coach Salters especially, you know, who wasn't a coach at that time has a really bad taste about that thing. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I think that, but again, I don't care what happens. The bragging rights in Knox County occurs in that ball game when it comes to football. So again, that'll be next week right here. I believe it's a seven o'clock start time here at Warrior Stadium. And yes. we should see a pretty good crowd, I would think, on both sides of the bleachers for this one. It'll be very interesting. I believe they're going to put three minutes back on the clock. To let it go, North Central after football here in period number three. But I tell you what, forty-seven to nothing. And Ed, you said something earlier about the you know it may have, you know score may not even reflect how lopsided the game has been. Yeah. I think your stats showed it. Yeah, and I think you want to if you're North Central, you're going to be in a situation where it's going to be a running clock in the second half. Yeah, you just want to make sure you don't get any of your players hurt at this stage because. They've got the rest of the season to play. And yeah, same with North Knox, too. Yeah, and they don't have a big, you know, a big bench anyway. Well, North Knox now, I think they're warming up for Vincent's Lincoln next week. So we're playing one green team next this week. They're getting another green team next week. And so we'll have to yeah. see. The thing about Lincoln, though, their defense is really, really strong. It's been their offense that's struck. Well, you look at North Knox as well. You, there's scouts that go out there and watch the games, I'm sure, Lincoln has a scout here tonight, and, yeah. or did have anyway for a time. Well, they can, they can blend but, in because they're wearing yeah, green, you know. But so. you look at the circumstances around around that, and North Knox has kind of displayed a a passing game that's that's really something that they they haven't shown that much diversity, in yet tonight they have. They've thrown the long pass down the middle. They've thrown the short pass across the middle. They've They've run the outside pass. They've uh, it forces the scouts to yeah. prepare a little more too. So once again, the North Knox Warriors. Now they did put uh, two minutes, I believe, back on the clock, and so we're running down to the final minute and a half. And you mentioned Ed earlier on of the homecoming, and congratulations to the homecoming queen this year, Tori French. The others, by the way, wanted to mention the other seniors on the court, Mallory Earhart and also Raina Brown. The juniors were Shelby Haig and Brittany Page. Thesey Dolke and Audrey Smith were the sophomore representatives. And Gina Oaks and Hala Roark were the freshman representatives. Yeah, they all, it was a very nice presentation and it was done prior to the start of the game. And uh, I think it, it was really very well done. Band and, yeah. has done a good job tonight, yeah, too. I think so. The band has done a very nice job playing, and uh, I think that's uh, that just kind of tops it off. By the way, wanted to give a shout-out, by the way, to Liz Romani and Valley Party Supply. They were responsible for the balloons that you see, all the red and black balloons around this area. And, again, you talked about kind of the the only way I can put it is a homecoming village in the green space over by the practice field, by the practice football field. And that was very well done. They said it was going to be a tailgate. It really had the kind of atmosphere over there off in that, that little Tailgate Village. And I'll tell you, Tom, I, I wanted to try some of everything out there, but there was just <laughs> Did they much, let you? There was, well, I, as long as I doled out the money, they were ready. <laughs> they were receptive. But I think there were just so many different things. And, you mean you didn't have a reputation to get it for free? No. <laughs> Man. No, I know. I was, if I were you, I'd be selling it that way, oh, but perfect. I didn't, I didn't do that. Oh, perfect. I was donating to the different causes that, that were that you being know, supported. You know, our producer back there, Don Zimmerman, is probably laughing her head off right now at that. Well, yeah, she knows you. You're tight. Am I, am I tight? Oh, my word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, now that we've got a word for the peanut gallery that you can't hear over the air, thankfully, uh, the North Knox yes. Warriors are kicking away as they get ready for the second half. Then it was true. All right. Eighth kickoff for the Warriors in this game. So North Knox about ready to start the third period. And it'll be interesting. I believe we will see a running clock. Well, this is one of those things. If you're the opposing coach and you're down 47 to nothing at halftime, 
this is one of those things that you call a character builder. Exactly. Well, you're trying to get something out of yeah. the game. That's you want what your, you're trying to do. You want your team to come out and show the character and, and yeah. that you want your program to have and to, to give it their all to the very end. Well, gave up on some scoreboard updates presented by Yoakum Chrysler Dodge just off Hart Street in Vincennes. And uh, right now, just looking down, 13-7, Lincoln now leading Jasper. So they got a touchdown there, and they lead down with an Inman Field. That one a kick at the 22-yard line, 30, 35, and hit and brought down right about the 35-yard line. And taking the ball up that time for the North Central Thunderbirds was Keelan Thompson. And, boy, he got a really nice yeah. job off the run, but he got smacked about the 35. Yeah, he's kind of limping a little bit back to the huddle there. I think he doesn't want to carry it this first time. Well, the Warriors look like they're going to be going with some new faces, it looks like, in some places on defense. Well, that's that's what I was telling you, Tom. Landon Worstell at the uh, left defensive end. He's a freshman. Yeah, this is one of those things that this is, I talked about the halftime adjustments, that these people going in for North Knox, they need to play yeah. like they're supposed to play. And uh, Dylan Bond is in there as well. He is a freshman, so a lot of new faces. They're going to hand it off of the middle. Dan Thompson gets hit and brought down after about a yard gain. It'll be second down. So the offense, the defensive line that time did a really nice job. Got a gain of two, second down and eight. So as you mentioned, a lot of front four, new front four players for the Warriors and a few in the backfield that are new as well. It looks like uh, Andrew Cross, the sophomore, going to be in as well at cornerback position. We'll see who else is new in there. And it also looks like Braden Hazlip in at that left cornerback, or right cornerback, make that left cornerback is cross. And the safety is uh, Levi Brocksmith. He's the intercepted a couple passes, including one against Boonville last week. And off outside, it's going to be back in. It's going to be hit, and he's going to drag a couple with him. He got him a three, and that's it. And that time it was um, Jace Newman, or Jace Norman, make that. So Jace Norman got about three, maybe four. It'll be third down and three. So a whole new team for the Warriors. That second team in there right now, it looks like. Yeah, this is probably your junior varsity. Yeah. So third down and about three. The one team for North Central taking on the two team for North Knox. It is 47 nothing Warriors under 10 minutes in the third period. Even with those new players, they're doing a pretty good job of holding the gains to a minimum. Well, at this point, that's the first possession. Let's right. see if they can sustain it. Third down and three. And off Newman up the middle. He's going to get hit, and he's going to get the first, the first down. down. Norman yeah. make that, actually. He got into the 46-yard line, so the second first down now for the T-Birds. Nice run that time by Jace Norman. So Dylan Bond made that tackle, the ball to 46. So Dylan Bond with the tackle. He is a 5'10", 250-pound freshman. So he's still got some pretty big kids on the way up. Well, experience, I think, takes the, the supreme importance yeah. in a varsity game. So ball to 46. It'll be first and 10 now for the T-Birds. Their second first down first of this half. This is where I'd come out with a pass. No. Nope. Brewer pitching it outside. He's going to look to run. He gets hit that time and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. He tried to stretch it out left. And they gave it off that time on a little pitch play to Rowdy Pearson. And Rowdy got rowdied up that time and gained maybe half a yard. Second down. Second. Nice play by North Knox stringing or that actually, ball out with that lost, second team. Lost a yard. Yeah, he did lose a yard. Second and 11. He moved the sticks on me. <laughs> How could he do that? I don't know, without asking you, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, without asking me, yeah. too. You have the radio touch with him. And the nerve of that. 45-yard line, second and 11. 617 and counting, or 817 counting. Make that in the third period. Warriors up 47 nothing. Second down and 11. Brewer now with wide receivers. Two out to each side. Brewer going to hold on to it. He's going to take it himself. Gets hit and brought down. He lost about three yards. North Knox again right in the middle of the play. And there are about three people there. One of them, I'm going to give credit to Wesley Boyd, the junior. So that time Brewer tried to run it and had nowhere to go. His black blocking on the front line just blew up on him, and they lost another yard. Third down to 12. 
I wonder if he's going to think about passing that ball now with that. I would think they've taken a long time to get yeah. the play in. So with that North Knox secondary, at least try him. Yeah, I would. I would speculate that this would be a pass play. Ball to 44, third down and 12. Here's Brewer. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to look outside. He's going to roll. He's going to get hit, and he's going to be brought down right near the original line of scrimmage. Got yeah. about a yard, no more. Fourth down. By Levi, Bunty. Levi Bunty got that tackle. So another freshman, 5'7", 130, and a freshman. So the Warriors going to bring it back, and let's see if they send back this time. It'll be Levi Brocksmith. He'll stand about his own 25-yard line, and so the punt coming up for Brewer. So Kobe Brewer going to kick it away from out of his own 33. Gets a pretty good snap. He's going to kick it away, and it got a nice one, a low driver, and Brocksmith at the 25. Nice catch, 30. He's going to get hit and brought down about the 32-yard line. At the 32-yard line and bringing him down that time is Keelan Thompson. So the Warriors will have it. They'll set it up right at the yep 32. So we'll see if the quarterback's going to be this time for the Warriors. It looks like possibly Red Sharon. Sharon. Yeah. Looks like Red Sharon with Levi Bunty in there. Let's see if Hazlett may not be as featured back. We'll find out. So Red Sharon will be a quarterback, and he's going to go with a situation where Braden Hazlip, yep, is right next to it. So Hazlip's going to get some work. Rhett, hand off to Hazlip. Braden up the middle, going to get hit and brought down after a very short gain, maybe one. It'll be second down. Come out of one yard gain, second down and nine. So. Clock continues to move, and boy, a very quickly moving third period. 5.30 left to go already in the third. Warriors with their first possession of this third period. Tell you what, Ed, if this keeps up, we may be getting home in record time here. (laughs) At the time you say that. Yeah, I know, I know. (laughs) Second and nine. Yeah, I know. Second out of nine. Yeah, here you go. Second out of nine. Here's a handoff. Sharon going to give it to inside Bunty. Levi got some yardage. He's got the first down and more. Up the middle of the field, down to the midfield mark. He got about 14 on that one. Another Warrior first down, the seventh of the game. Well, that time they did the same thing. They did old, that little jet sweep off of the left side by near that left tackle. And, boy, that has been yeah, gouging so for big yards. 17 yards, Tom. And Holden the Doge ran out against Boonville. He scored four touchdowns that time. Levi Bunty did it and got 14 yards. So that wingback play has been very, very successful. 4.32 left to go on the third. Warriors still leading at 47 nothing, and in North Central Territory at the 49. Rhett Sharon, first and 10. Sharon. Hands it off up the middle. It's going to be Hazlett. Braden goes forward. He'll reach the football forward for a gain of about maybe one and a half. It'll be second down and eight. Ethan Hazlip had a couple of touchdowns against Tecumseh. Who was it, Ethan? Who? Ethan Hazlip, number 25. Mm. Or Braden Hazlip, me, Zach, make that. Yeah. Braden Hazlip, number 25. Yeah, get his name right. Yeah, thank you. This is his moment in the sun here. Yep. Well, he had two touchdowns, like I said, against the Braves, so yeah. he has run the ball hard. Second down and eight. Red Sharon, a quarterback for the North Knox Warriors. Sharon, quarterbacking the second team. Red handoff inside. Bunty is going to get away from one man. He gets outside, 45-yard line. He'll go down there after about a two-yard gain. He slipped a tackle that time, man, and was able to get a couple of yards, and it looked like he was going to be stopped for no gain. Got popped that time, but he was able to slide outside to the left and get a couple of more yards. Third down and six, he'll call it. Actually, correction, make the third and five. And a half. Yeah, about five. Yeah, I think you're right on that, Ed. About <laughs> five and a half, looking at it. Of course, the six are on the other side of the field. Third down and five <laughs> and a half. Three minutes left to go in the third period. Here's Rhett. Rhett Sharon. Hands off outside. Hayslip going to get hit that time and brought down near the original line of scrimmage at the 49, and that'll bring in Troy Nolan to punt it away. Not the first very time good, in this game. Not very good blocking, Tom. 
So the Warriors will kick it from the 49. The first time in the game they'll punt. And Brewer will be the punch returner. Kobe Brewer. It's the first punt. First punt of the game for the Warriors. Brewer, the six-foot junior. So Troy Nolan has had a pretty decent game so far punting. He's averaging about 38 yards a punt. That one's a ground ball. He's going to get it away. Oh, boy, what What a a kick. What a kick. And it's going to be, no, he fumbled it, but he fell on it. All the way back at the 10-yard line. That's a 40-yard. That's a 41-yard kick. In the air. Yep, that was in the air, too, as you mentioned, a 41-yard kick. I mean, that, that was that was the best kick we've seen this season. I, I think he had one against Boonville that one well, late that was pretty similar, but that I'm, was a 41 I mean, yarder in the air. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, we've seen a couple get some rolls. Yeah, but that one was truly that's that was the one time that North Central should have let it go and roll into the end zone. I think so. 41 yard kick that time by Troy Dolan. Boy, you got a hold of that one. That one was a line drive. Actually, it's fumble at the end of the play. He's able to fall on it. 122 and counting third period. 47 nothing Warriors. T-Birds of North Central have it at their 10 and a whistle. Timeout. And a timeout taken. So North Central going to take a timeout with 118. Up to go in the third period of play. Back after this 30 second break. This is North Knox Warrior Football on 1057 The Ride at WUCR.com. Irrigation is not one size fits all. Turn to the irrigation professionals at Ileana Irrigation, your local Ranky dealer, for the customized irrigation solution you need to improve your yields and increase your profits. With various pipe choices, sizes, and span lengths at their disposal, Ileana Irrigation can design, install, and service a durable Ranky pivot to fit any field and any budget. Call Ileana Irrigation today to learn how a customized Ranky irrigation system can benefit your farming operation. Ranky, more right than rain, and Ileana Irrigation, your local irrigation experts. Let's take a look at the scoreboard update presented by Yoakum Chrysler Dodge. Score a great deal with Yoakum Chrysler Dodge just off Hart Street in Vincennes. Jasper at Vincennes Lincoln right now. Jasper back up top, 14-13. That in the first quarter. Till City 27-6. Also right now Central 21, Castle nothing. First and 10 at 10-yard line now, their own 10. Yeah, they're really backed up this time. Kobe Brewer standing at his five, going to hand it off up the middle. Not that time either. They're going to get back to the line of scrimmage and not much more. Maybe lost a yard. The initial hit right up the middle that time for the Warriors. And uh, that hit came out of uh, Dylan Bond. Again, 5'10", 250, and a freshman, and he looks it. By the way, an update on that score. Linton right now leading Boonville 6 nothing. That in the second quarter. So clock running down, 42 seconds left, third period. It'll be second down. Again, the gate a half a yard, second down and nine. Kobe Brewer is still a quarterback. Hands off up the middle, and they got him again that time, all the way back to the five. Three or four North Knox t- shirts, black shirts there at the time, meeting Jace Norman. He lost five on that well, one. Well, I think down. ended up being about three. They gave him Yeah, they gave his, him forward progress yeah. to the seven, I believe. That'll be the final play of the third period. The North Knox Warriors right now lead it 47 to nothing. We're back with the fourth quarter of play in one minute. You're listening to North Knox Warrior Football on 105.7 The Ride at WUZR.com. Does your staff work on their feet all day? Do their feet hurt all day? Do they have trouble getting to the shoe store to purchase their work shoes? Well, let us come to you. Hi, this is Tracy from Grundman Shoes, 906 North 7th Street, Vincennes, and we have gone mobile. We can now bring our quality, service, and selection to you. Call us today at 1-800-726-4770 for more details on us helping you have happier, healthier employees. Grundman, your footwear specialist since 1929. Save up to 40% every day on your groceries. Amazing quality, fantastic prices, satisfaction guaranteed, or 100% money back. Fresh meat is cut in store daily, and special orders on meat are available. Now at Save-A-Lot, fresh boneless pork loin is $1.49 a pound, and fresh bone-in split chicken breasts are $1.29 a pound. Also, green seedless grapes are $1.39 a pound, gala apples are $1.99 for a three-pound bag, and Totina's Party Pizza is $5 for $5. Shop and save at your Vincent Save-A-Lot, where bananas are $0.39 a pound every day. 12 minutes left to go. Final 12 minutes presented by Guardian Angel Home Health Care. Give Guardian Angel 12 minutes and let them show you why they're the health care angel you're looking for. 
Well, North Central back on their seven yard line, Tom. They've got a long way to go and not a lot of time to do it. Thank you. I was about ready to say that. You, you, you're exactly thinking what I'm thinking. A short, <laughs> short time to get there. Third down now to about 13. Here's Brewer. Hands off outside. Not that time. They're going to go all the way back to the three. Oh, Maybe they give him to the four, Tom, but. Not much more than that. They'll have to kick it from the back of their end zone as uh, Jace Norman at time. North Knox, that's their two team, man, and their second unit is just swarming right now. Well, they got, when you've got a team down, Tom, you, it's, it's a lot easier, you know, because you're, you're excited, get the chance to play fresh yeah, legs and. That's true. Now, I don't think they'll put the rush on. They'll just try to put the return on here. Yeah, and, you would think. Yeah. Back in the end zone at the back of it is uh, Kobe Brewer. My back near is his own end zone. Here's a high snap. He's going to kick it away. Well, that was a pop-up. It did not go far. It's going to bounce, take a good bounce for North Central, but even with that, it's going to go down at the 24. Yeah. Yeah, not a... But he a 19-yard punt. He was under pressure then to get it away. I'm... I'm surprised he did get it away. That was a pop-up. He just hit it yeah. straight up in the air. Yeah, this is a... Uh... I mean, that was a pop-up to shortstop, I think, that time. It just went straight up. So the 24, Warriors a short field. They lead 47 and nothing, 10-40 left to go. Again, a running clock here with the 47 to nothing game at halftime, and we're still there. Here's Red Sharon. Hey, slip beside him. Here's Rhett, fumbles Fumble the football, and he's going to get hit and brought down. He'll go back to about the 28-yard line, so he lost about four. I had four. another. Was that, I uh, was trying to see. That was Devin Kent, it looked like, Tom. Yeah. So, so a three, new quarterback. He also a new quarterback. Okay, well, he couldn't handle the snap that time, but he lost about three seconds and 13. The normal backup quarterback, by the way, is Mason Lyons, and he is out injured. So that's why Red Sharon has been running the second team. It is Red Sharon, by the way, a quarterback. So it's one who dropped the ball second down now is- about 13. It is Sharon. No, it isn't either. You're right. I think it is Ken. Up the middle, here's Hainslip. He's going to get hit and brought down after he goes forward. Kind of a downhill run. He got the RDG lost and maybe one or two more. It'll be third down. And you're right, Ed, it is Devin Kent. Well, thank you, Tom. 5'11", 190, and another freshman. So third down and nine. It's wearing number 32 at quarterback, so. As I mentioned, Mason Lyons would normally be back there, but again, he is injured. Kent now third down. Brayden Hayes look beside him, third down. Going to keep it himself. He's going to go forward. Kent going to get hit and brought down after a right to line of scrimmage, actually, before the nine. Yeah, lost a yard. Okay, so they'll give him back to the original line of scrimmage and fourth and ten. So the clock continues to run. 8.55 and counting on what should be a very short evening. Cross your fingers and toes for the North Knox <laughs> Warriors. So fourth down. Actually give him fourth and nine. Again, Ed, I think he lost half a yard. <laughs> Fourth down and nine. I've got those halves in here. Perfect. I'm going to see point five at the end no, of your... There's uh, always two of them. Here's Ken, head off in the middle. He's, up. He's going outside. Oh, He's got the first down, 15-yard line to the 10. He'll go out of bounds, and about seven, the six-yard line. Six, yeah. So Brayden Hazlett... He needed 10, and he got all of that. Actually, nine and a half got all that at four down inside the 10. To the five-yard line, Warriors there first and goal. Trying to get into the 50s, Mark, for the second time this year. They scored in the 50s against Eastern Green. So Kent. Devin Kent, first and 10. No, actually, first and goal, they got it to five. Kent with Hazlip beside him. Devin Kent going to hand off inside. Beers Bunty to the end zone. He got in. Touchdown. Warrior touchdown. Inside handoff that time to Levi Bunty, who will go in for his first touchdown of the, of his varsity career. So again, a five yard touchdown for Levi Bunty, and the Warriors now lead a 53 to nothing. 
So it's 7.22 left to go in the game. The Warriors get the touchdown out of Levi Bunty and continue to extend their lead 53 nothing. Extra point coming up now. <laughs> yeah, Levi Bundy, he was bringing the ball over to the sideline. He was wanting them to save that for him. And Trey Keller, the senior, is going to give it a shot. They're going to let the senior lineman, Trey Keller, give it a shot. Zach Boyle's holding. Got the snap. The kick is down. It looks good, and it is. Trey Keller with the extra point. So Trey Keller one for one on extra points in his career, and the Warriors now lead it by 54 to nothing score. Well, that may be his career points. I tell you, <laughs> but that's he, he did I, score. But I tell you, we we kind of joke a little bit about it, Tom. But in in a lot of instances, you do need to have a backup kicker. You know what? That kick looked good too. It did. It did. And in fact, Dylan Wolf has kicked a couple of extra points. In fact, he tried a field goal, I believe, one time and missed. So you got Dylan Wolf too if you needed a backup in case Holman Dodes goes down injured. Troy Nolan will kick it away. So the Warriors bring their team out onto the field. Devin Kent going to stand in there right next to Troy Nolan. I think everybody's going to get to play tonight if they're physically able to play. Strong side Warriors on the left. They got six players over there. They put the ball on the right hash mark, which has been Troy Nolan's kind of his M.O. Well, at least they have 11 out there and not. Well, probably be helpful, right? Well, I was thinking worried about having 12. Nolan kicks it down the left sideline. Nice That's going to stay in bounds and it's going to go down and it is going to roll bounds. out at about but the. Did it touch him? I don't it know. It goes out about the nine yard line. Actually, you're going to mark it out at the 12. There was a flag, so yep, he it's must a flag not have down. So it. at the 12, they'll pull it back. It looks like to the 35 and that's where the T-Birds will take it first and 10 as the ball. They, they wisely let it go out of bounds, said. I, I thought it was going to kind of hug that sideline, but it, just trickled well, it out of bounds. It took a bounce toward the sideline. Yeah. That helped that decision. So ball be up to 35, so the T-Birds will take it there. Eight, actually what, six, 13 left to go in the game. Warriors lead it easily, 54 to nothing. They were up 47 nothing at half. Basically, it's been cruise control in the second half for the Warriors. And it's a lot of opportunity here for the younger kids. Yeah. To- to come in and play yeah. on the varsity level. And you see the varsity, it looks like, with their night over. Standing around in knots, probably talking about what kind of pizza they want after the game. First and ten, here's Brewer. Wide receiver's out, man, in motion. He'll get it outside, and he's going to get around to the 35-yard line, back to line scrimmage. He gets away from a couple of tackles. He'll go down at the 39 and now continue into about the 41. Looks like he got taken down by his shoulders that one time, but a good run. And that time, Keelan Thompson would not go down. It got about six. Well, that's the thing that the coach would say. What are you doing? You're supposed to be tackling, not just hugging people. Yep, six-yard gain that time. Second down, the ball at the 41. Because they had him right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they and, did. And uh, he just continued driving his legs. And Wouldn't North stop. Knox just kind of holding on to him instead of making a hard-driving tackle. 5.02 left to go in the game. Warriors lead him 54 to nothing. Speaking of 54, number 54, Dylan Bond back in. Taking the place of Benton, of Keaton Wade, who was in on that last play. Second down now. Hand off outside Thompson. Keelan oh, going to go inside. <laughs> and it's going to get the first down to the 50 in the North Knox territory at the 49. I don't think they're going to call that. No. <laughs> first down, T-Birds. He did a, a really a good job, though, a... He is able to hold two people and bring them down. It was a nice takedown. <laughs> First and 10 to all to 49. I don't think the referees are going to call that. They're just going to want to get out of here. 424 left to go in the game. Now, who carried that, Tom? I didn't. Uh, Kalen Thompson, number one. I was trying to watch the, the holding, player hold yeah, over the there. Takedown. Yeah, the takedown. I, I was sure he, I, he's got to be a wrestler. First and 10 to all to 49. Because to take two of them down. Uh, that's, that's pretty yeah, strong. Though. It is, it is. Brewer outside is going to be stretched out. Four wide receivers hand off up the middle instead. They're going to take it up the middle and get some good yardage. They're going to push forward. Got a first down about yeah. 11 yards on that one down to the 39 and the run that time out of, uh, Jace Jace Norman. Norman, yeah. 
So fourth first down now for North Central. No, it looks like he's going to be right short. Oh, he's Tom. short. Okay, he's sunken down at one. So he got nine. I thought he had the first down. He's second down at nine. Well, it looks like the, the defense in there for North Knox is uh, they're practicing their homecoming dance steps because there's not a lot of of hitting and driving going on out there. Well, it looks like Bo Nolan in the middle of that defense. Well, North Central pretty well has their starters in. Yep. Four still, wide, so. four wide receivers. Brewer gonna hand it off of the middle, not that time. Boy, they just knocked him backward after about a one yard gain. Right Our at the loss. beginning of the play was Big Gunner Thompson, 5'11", 205 and a sophomore. Gunner Thompson also played some JV ball and he was a Real nice force inside for the North Knox JV team a year ago. Third down. Third down, and he got back to the line of scrimmage. Third and one. 2.50 left to go. North Knox still pitching a shutout. He lead 54 nothing. So under three minutes left. Well, here's a chance, Tom. You could... You could pass here. You got yeah. two downs to get one yard. And... Well, you got four wide receivers still in the game. Yeah. Here's Brewer, handoff up the middle, and yeah. he's got the first down. They're going to go forward up to about the 36, yeah. so he did get the first down. Game. So he did get the first down that time to Jace uh, Norman. So the ball is going to be at the 36-yard line. And that tackle that time by Landon Worstel. Yes. A freshman, and I believe a uh, young lady as well. No. Okay, I thought she was. I thought it was. I've heard about a uh, a girl coming up through the system. Yeah, but playing she's, on the line. I think she's on the eighth grade team this year. So first and ten, and off up the middle again, and Norman going to go forward and just plow forward for about five more. So my apologies. I saw Landon with a wine. I thought maybe that's you know that was it. What that was. So my apologies. Yeah, that's okay. He'll probably slap you when he sees you. No, perfect. Five yard gain. He'll be there five. Wednesday night. Yeah. What happens Wednesday nights? Uh, Thursday night, actually. Uh huh. <laughs> what happens Thursday night? Then? North Knox tonight, by the way, for the Bicknell McDonald's, will be getting going with Vincent Lincoln this Thursday night. As the mm-hmm. Alice's will come into Warrior Stadium. Didn't it used to be you had something on Wednesday? Is that That's basketball? That's on basketball, yeah. Okay. That was basketball. Sorry. <laughs> that was actually a four-yard gain. Second down at six. I just wanted to give you a lead in. Oh, thank you. Here's Brewer. Got to keep it himself up the middle and not much. Got him about a yard. Third down. Mm-hmm. Third down at five. Football at the 31. And under a minute left to go. 45 yeah. seconds left. Could be one more play. We'll have to see. Yeah. They haven't passed the ball with this second unit. No. They've just kept on the ground throughout the whole game. And they're going to go over and talk right now. So Brewer going to go over and talk to him. 28 seconds left to go. So you may be right about one more play. And you wonder if that, that's what they're trying to do is maybe make a poke for the end zone. I think they'll have to run one more, one regardless. Third down and five. Here's Brewer. High snap. He's going to hand it up the middle instead. And Norman going to get hit and brought down, I think, short of the first down. He's about two yards short. And that's going to be it. Three seconds left to go. Two seconds. One second. And that's it. Game over. Warriors win it. Four and one on the season now for North Knox as they complete a 54 nothing win over the North Central T-Birds. We will be back after this two-minute break. You're listening to North Knox Warrior Football right here on 105.7 The Ride at WUCR.com. Have a shoulder or knee bothering you? Hurting when you exercise or participate in sports? Painful when you're on the job or working around the house? Many shoulder and knee problems are treated with simple rehab. But when surgery is necessary, Dr. Terry Fenwick provides the latest outpatient arthroscopic techniques to reduce pain and recovery time so you can return to your work and activities faster. Don't let shoulder or knee pain get you down any longer. See Dr. Fenwick, a leader in sports medicine. Get answers, get results, get Quest Orthopedics on Willow Street in Vincennes. 
Guardian Angel Home Health Care and Guardian Angel Personal Services in Bicknell is the hometown health care team you can always count on. As a local family-owned and operated health care facility, Guardian Angel takes great pride in serving you, your family, and friends. Guardian Angel Home Health Care and Guardian Angel Personal Services supports local organizations and events, businesses, schools, and youth sports. Guardian Angel Home Health Care and Guardian Angel Personal Services, where your care is their business. Have a great season, North Knox Warriors. A well-known Bicknell dentist is back and ready to serve you. Dr. Stephen K. Williams is accepting new and return patients at his office on State Road 67 in Bicknell. Dr. Williams wants to help you have your best smile. With decades of experience, he will help you just like he's helped me. I'm proud to call Dr. Stephen Williams my dentist and hope you will too. Dr. Stephen Williams, back in Bicknell and waiting to serve you. Call 812-735-2020. Hey, it's John Yoakum here at Yoakum Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram to let you know that this month we have teamed up with Helping His Hands to do a canned food drive. We are offering a conventional oil change plus a free 24-point inspection for just $24.95 when you bring in five canned food items or more. We haven't left out you diesel or synthetic oil change vehicles. Bring them in with your canned foods and receive $15 off your oil change. There's no appointment necessary and help us fill this Ram truck up with canned foods for Helping His Hands. That's Yoakum Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram just off Hart Street next to Coles and Vincennes. Did you bring? Well, we're back once again here at Warrior Stadium, and you're listening to the Graber Post Game Show. A reminder to post up and score with your next building from Graber Post Buildings on the Odin at Camelberg Road. And the first comments about this game, North Knox wins at 54 to nothing, and basically they were up 47 nothing at halftime and just cruised on in. Yeah, the outcome was never in doubt from the first series. Let's go ahead and take a look at the touchdowns right now. Cole Richter started things off with a 59-yard run, and that was on the second play from scrimmage and just showed what was going to happen in this game. Yeah, that's it's just North Knox just dominated the game, as I say, from the opening series. So Cole Richter with a 59-yard run. Also, Holtman Dodes with a pass play, the first of four touchdowns out of Reese Hamelman. That extra point good made it 13-0. And then Cole Richter caught a 10-yard pass to the end zone. Extra point good, 20 to nothing. And then the first of two touchdowns by Matt Urbane. We'll listen to the second one. It was magnificent here in just a couple of seconds. A nine-yard pass of 227. Left to go in the first period, making it 26-0. North Knox added one more score just before the end of the first period. Zach Boyle with a six-yard touchdown to make it 33 to nothing. But the touchdown I want to highlight was the sixth touchdown that North Knox made. A brilliant catch by Matt Urbane. That was our Hamelman DeKalb play of the game. Throws it downfield long. He's going to go for his man in the end zone. He's caught! Touchdown! Warrior touchdown! What a catch by Matt Urbane! Oh my goodness, Ed. That was a fantastic catch in the end zone. Man, that was a great one, Tom, right there. So Matt Urbane with that 26-yard pass. And, Ed, to kind of describe what happened, Urbane was covered extremely well in the back center of the end zone, but he got a little bit of separation, reached up, and just basically brought it in over his head where the defender couldn't get it. Well, and he was falling down, Tom. Yeah. He was almost on his back when the ball hit him in the chest. Matt Urbane with that 26-yard touchdown, probably one of the best pass catches of the year, maybe the last few. Yes, I mean, we we saw North Knox with a passing game that really came to life tonight. Four touchdown passes out of Reese Hamelman and Levi Brocksmith ended up with a 26-yard touchdown, 449 in the second quarter. And then the second team, maybe even the third team, possibly in this case, uh, Levi Bunty, a five-yard touchdown run. Trey Keller, the senior, getting the chance for the extra point. It was picture perfect, Ed. 54 nothing. the final score. North Knox only eight first downs, but the reason why was all the big plays they had. North Central with four first downs. Red zone, North Knox four of four from the red zone. North Central never got there. One turnover for each team, an interception that was thrown by Reese Hamelman, and a fumble, actually a fumble. That, actually, no, I take it back. The uh, interception was by Reese Hamelman. On a ball thrown by the North Central quarterback, North Knox had one fumble in the game. Penalties, North Knox only one penalty for five yards the entire game. North Central five for 30 yards. Add about the individual statistics. All right, Tom. Well, first we'll look at North Knox. And Cole Richter was a leading rusher, of course, in the ball game. But he only carried the ball six times all in the first half for 136 yards. 
Uh, Levi Bundy only carried in the second half. He had three carries for 24 yards. Uh, Kent, uh, Devin Kent, he carried the ball twice for minus five yards. Braden Hayslip, he carried the ball five times for 22 yards. Zach Boyles, all in the first half, two carries for 50 yards. And in the first half also, two carries for 23 yards. Levi Brocksmith, one carry for 26 in the first half. Reese Hamelman, one carry for 14 in the first half. In the second half, North Knox ended up with only 41 yards rushing. Uh, passing, North Knox did not pass it in the second half, but in the first half, Reese Hamelman, he was 5 of 6 for 81 yards. Uh, Rhett Sharon nor Devin Kent, neither passed it. Those were all in the, they played in the second half. So North Knox had uh, 0 yards passing in the second half, 41 yards rushing for 41 yards total rushing and passing in the second half. They had 329 in the first half rushing and passing for 370 yards for the ball game. And then North Central, uh, Jason Bonacorsi, he carried, uh, I think, the first carry of the game for zero yards, and he did not carry it after that. Jason Norman ended up being the leading rusher. He carried the ball 20 times for 36 yards. He had 17 of those in the second half. Corbin Hughes carried five times all of the first half for a negative three. Keelan Thompson carried the ball four times for 16 yards. Uh, and he had a total of those 16 yards were in the second half. Uh, Rowdy Pearson carried the ball one time in the second half for a negative one yards. Kobe Brewer carried the ball eight times for a negative one yards. So North Central... In the second half, they had uh, a total of 32 yards rushing, 44 yards for the game. No yards passing. Brewer did attempt to pass the ball five times, but was unsuccessful. And so the combined rushing and passing yards for North Central, 12 in the first half, 32 in the second half, for 44 yards versus 370 for North Knox. We will recap the touchdowns uh, presented for champions together by First Vincent Savings Bank, the Ileana Irrigation Something More Award, and a chance to talk with head coach Josh Chambers. We'll do all that in one minute. You're listening to North Knox Warrior Football right here on 105.7 The Ride at WUCR.com. Post frame buildings continue to pop up all over the area. And at Graber Post Buildings, they've been putting up buildings for over 40 years. Garages, pull barns, storage buildings, workshops, apartments, even indoor basketball courts, and some of the most attractive commercial buildings in the state. Every job is specific and unique to your wants and your needs. Graber Post also has packages for contractors and do-it-yourselfers. So for your next building or roofing project, call for a free quote at Graber Post, 800-264-5013. Hey everyone, this is Randy Hamelman of Hamelman Decal. Here at Laidback Acres, located smack dab in the middle of warrior country, we're all warrior strong. Decalvin Asgro Seeds, with their proven yield potential and unbeatable disease packages, are great teammates for all your acres. Good luck this year to all our athletes. Hamelman Decal is a proud supporter of North Knox High School and Warriors Athletics. See you at the game, warrior fans. It's victory time. And as Randy Hamilton said, it is victory time tonight for the North Knox Warriors. They win at 54-0 one final time here at North Knox High School. And along with that, Elliot, I'm Tom Lee. Time now for the Ileana Irrigation Something More Award presented by Ileana Irrigation. Get something more in your field every growing season. But Ileana Irrigation sets you up for success. Call them at 890-6000. And I swing it over to Ed Elliott to get his Something More Award with him. Yeah, I tell you, Tom, I think sometimes... A person maybe does the best job that you don't know much about them and until you look at the stats at the end of the game. And I think tonight's ball game, because he really had no mistakes, did a good job of leading his team, and I thought that was Reese Hamilton. That was my choice as well. Four touchdowns on the game. He got a chance to open it up. But I tell you what, though, I think Reese Hamilton is the award winner. But but special special honorable mention to Matt Urbane. Now, those two touchdowns, especially the second one, was just outstanding. Yeah, and and I there are a lot of players out there tonight that did a lot of good things. But I think when you look at 
the the type of offense, the intricacy of yeah. of the handoffs and the movements, and yeah. and then to throw the ball effectively, and also had that fourteen yard run, and right. I think all those things, and you really didn't notice him, and I think that was the important part yeah. for me. I think I, I'm with you. I think he's my uh, my star of the game tonight as well, Reese Hamilton. And uh, one more thing before we get to Coach Chambers. $140 more tonight to Champions Together, presented by First Vincent Savings Bank, your real community bank with two locations in Vincent. Now we'll talk with head coach Josh Chambers, going to wrap things up. Coach, uh, you kind of dominated from the first play all the way through. You've got to be really happy with the performance tonight. Yeah, uh, physically we felt like in this ball game coming in that we would have the advantage. Uh, our guys uh, continue weekly just to prove that they are willing to put in the efforts to be a very physical football team. And uh, tonight that was no different. We really got after them. Um, and, you know, we tackled well. We played well. We didn't have a bunch of penalties. It was just a football game that we were able to get out there, take care of business, and proud of our guys. And that's one thing that I will say about this football team every day is they bring the lunch pail every day. They're ready to get to work. Uh, they continue to grind it out to be the best football team they can be. And I've said this uh, a lot, and I'm going to continue to say it. Uh, I, I still don't feel like that these guys have played their very best football game yet. I think they've played good football. I think they've played great football. But I, I keep telling them it's just like hitting a home run. Uh, when you make that contact, you don't really feel it. You just know it. Yeah. yeah. And, next, uh, next yeah. three weeks um, will be the best. And so for we, we've got a good football team that we like that uh, coming into next week. Um and we really feel like we're starting to hit our stride. And, you know, I'm excited for these kids. I'm excited for the opportunities to compete. And uh, next week's going to be a great ball game. It's going to be a good atmosphere. We're excited about it. It'll be a lot like that Boonville game um, last week. Uh, it's one of those games we need to get our kids ready to go. And they just need to come out and play good football. I think if they do. That ball game next week is going to be one of the ones that I wouldn't want to miss if I were a fan. Yeah, we'll talk about the next three weeks here in just a couple of minutes. I think it's going to be a measuring stick for your team. But talking once again about tonight, one more question before we give it to Ed, and that is I have seen a difference from last year, maybe even from the beginning of this season in Reese Hamelman. It looks like he has really become better at selling the play, at being able to be the kind of deceptive quarterback that you need in that running game. Yeah, uh, Reese, again, uh, like with all of our kids, takes a lot of pride in his craft. So he is working his tail off every day. And that's something as a coach you have to respect. Uh, anytime your guys are giving you all the effort they can give you, it, it doesn't matter. That That's all you can ask out of kids. And these guys understand, and here's the most impressive thing uh, with our kids and their work ethic and what they do is, how much when they get on the field, they're a joy to watch play. Uh, very physical. I love watching our team tackle. You know, they just tackle and hit, and it's relentless. It's every play, every yeah. snap, every down. It doesn't matter who we're playing, you know, and that it's impressive because that tells you that your kids are strong, they've put in the off-season work, and that they're committed to the cause, and these guys are, and it's uh, something that I love about them. Well, your kicking game – Showed a step forward here tonight. I thought uh, you had some some great extra points. You were yeah. becoming more consistent. Had now you have a backup extra point kicker. <laughs> yeah, and again, this is something that our kids continue to work on. We do it every day. You know, we're out there working, we're kicking them, we're moving the ball around, and we knew it was just a matter of time. Of course, we still got some some tricks up our sleeve when it comes to that, just to try to catch you know teams off. You know, a little off guard. If they're not going to defend something, of course, we'll try to take advantage. But um, at the end of the day, uh, we're proud of our guys and how they're working through the special team stuff. We've really played pretty good special teams all year, and uh, we expect that to continue as we kind of move on through the rest of the season. Boy, Trey Keller looked good on that extra point, now. Yeah, uh, Trey's <laughs> yeah, a kid. Uh, um, he's like a Swiss Army knife. Trey play. He does a lot of different jobs for us, whether it be playing any position on the O line. Um, from center all the way out to tackle, whether it be playing some inside linebacker, D tackle, D end. Trey's the type of kid that does all that for us. And I'll tell you, you need a kid like that on your football team because he does it all very well. And so that's impressive on his part. Kick and field goal, that's another good one. Uh, we like where Holtman's at on that. And again, Holtman Dodes is a kid that continues to show up week in and week out, play good quality football, good defense. Uh, and that's just our, all of our guys, our O line. I really feel like our O line, 
uh, is starting to develop a lot of continuity. They're starting to work together very well. And that was evident last week against Boonville is that, hey, they're starting to figure it out. If they do it right every time and hard every time, they're going to move people, they're going to create plays, and they're going to give us a chance to win. So yeah. play defense, play sound offense, give your chance, give yourselves a chance to compete and win, and that's what our kids are doing. And I thought something that maybe gets <laughs> overlooked sometimes, I thought uh, sportsmanship you and your team showed tonight with – in the second half, giving a lot of younger players an opportunity to play. And yeah. I know North Central, they were just trying to get something going yep. with their starters, and they even left their starters in. And I've I've seen a number of situations where uh, other coaches have just continued to try to run the score up to get that kind of publicity. But I, I think that says a lot about the character of you and your team. Well, we've got uh, a great, again, a great group of kids. Uh, I, you know, Coach Hudson over on the other sideline spent a lot of years roaming our sidelines. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things that we're proud of the way our guys conducted themselves. Um, I thought it was a really clean game. Uh, again, respect all the kids across from the side, the other side over there. And we're just happy that we can get everybody a chance to get in the ball game, homecoming night, great crowd. Yeah. Um, so just again, it's one of those things that. Uh, we just continue to be proud of our guys. The Big Green next week. They're playing Jasper right now. Last year, board 21-13. Jasper leads it at Inman in the third period. Then you got Linton the week after that. Right now, they lead Boonville 13 nothing in the third quarter up at Roy Williams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we take this one week at a time. Uh, so right now, my focus, now that this game's over, is Vincennes. Uh, I, I will not even, with Linton, I, that's not one of those things I worry about. Um, we're focused on Vincennes. I won't even consider uh, break and stride on my week to week methods here, uh, because, uh, respect for the next opponent and respect for getting our guys prepared. So, uh, Vincennes is next on the list and, uh, we need to show up ready to play. This is going to be a great atmosphere next week. Uh, super excited for our kids to have a chance to compete in that caliber of ball game. Same way it was with Boonville last week. It's going to be that way next week. Uh, very excited for it. Very excited for our kids. Uh, excited for the county game and, uh, Again, just looking forward for the week of prep. Well, we'll talk about more of this about this on Thursday night at the Big No McDonald's. One thing about Lincoln, though, is um, you talk about the Lincoln Atlases. One thing you talk about is a really good defense, really headed up well by E. Smith, and then you've got an offense that is very young right now and still kind of trying to find its footing. Yeah, and they've played a lot of good defense. They have a lot of good athletes. I uh, haven't watched much film. We did have their Boonville film just from scouting-wise with Boonville. So we've seen a little bit. Um, again, it's one of those games that we like to match up. Uh, we think up front uh, we're going to be able to play with a lot of guys. Uh, we really like our defense, and they have a nice defense too. So there's some similarities there. Our offense might be a touch more mature, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's a rivalry game. So it's just like this. Everyone was telling me that Jasper was going to blow Vincent's out. Well, I knew that wasn't going to happen because that's one of those dagger <laughs> games, you know. And uh, so they're going to be playing uh, like it's the Super Bowl. And they're going to bring yeah. that here next week. So our boys need to be ready. Coaching staff boys, we need to create uh, our kids, give them an advantage. But really, we need to have our attacking mentality and keep a lot of pressure on the Alice's. Coach, we appreciate you joining us. Congratulations. Enjoy homecoming. Big three weeks coming up. We start next week at home against Lincoln. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you very much. As uh, head coach Josh Chambers joins us, Ed, let's go ahead and close it out. Good win tonight for the Warriors, 54 to nothing. It's a great ball game. I thought they, they really, uh, it, it's going to improve their level of confidence and knowing that if they execute the game plan, they can do some good things. We didn't see hardly any penalties, none by that first string. Uh, so they're, they're really, as the coach talked about, maturing as a team, and I think they're hitting the streak of the next three weeks at exactly the right time. Well, to thank our studio producer, the one and only Don, the better half is Zimmerman, and we thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week, Thursday night from the Bicknell McDonald's, getting you ready for North Knox and Vincent's Lincoln, the county battle here at Warrior Stadium. And then we'll be back with you next week, 7 o'clock, as the North Knox Warriors take on the Vincent's Lincoln Alices. Until Thursday night, have yourself a great weekend. We will see you Thursday night for the Bicknell McDonald's. Until then, I'm Tom Lee saying so long from Warrior Stadium.